I'm going to call the Board of Selectmen's meeting for April 2nd, 2018 back to order. We started tonight's meeting in executive session where we took up union negotiations with the HEA union. We did take a vote pending their approval of the contract, which we will uh, bring back next week so long as they approve it. And we also voted on the executive session minutes. With that, I, we are announcing that we are video audio taping as well as live broadcasting this public meeting. In addition, anyone in the audience wishing to video or audio tape must notify the chairman now. Hearing no one, please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Anyone for weekly briefing? Public comment and announcement. Good evening, Cindy Williams, uh, Executive Director of the Harwich Chamber. I just want to remind everyone this Thursday, April 5th, we have the job fair at the Monomoy Regional High School. This is for all ages, so if you are looking for a job, full-time, part-time, year-round, or seasonal, uh, please join us. Also, if you are a business and would like to exhibit, please contact me at the Chamber by Wednesday at noontime. Thank you. Anyone else for public comment and announcement? Moving on to the consent agenda. Larry. Mr. Chair, I move the following consent agenda items. A, approve the minutes. Uh, March 5th, 2018, executive session. March 10th, 2018, regular session. March 19, 2018, regular session. March 19, 2018, executive session. March 26, 2018, executive session. B, approve town administrator to serve as signatory on Seaport Economic Council grants for $1 million for Sackett Second Landside Project. C, approve request by Pay Grove to donate one year weight room membership and sweatshop to Tulsa Public Auction. Sweatshirt, not I just think it may have been made in one place. I think that's not what it made in the sweatshirt. I just think it. I mean, I, I'm not sure I want to, want to do this. Uh, D. Approved request for assistance from the Caleb Chase Fund. E. Accept resignation of Katie O'Sullivan from the Bylaw Charter Review Committee. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, next up under public hearings and presentations, we have two, the uh, remaining articles that the board has not voted yet. Chris, do you want to do an overview or do you just want to start? Yeah, Mr. Chair, maybe I'll uh, do a highlight on each one. Uh, the Finance Committee did finalize their work. Uh, they have recommendations on all articles. Uh, so perhaps what I'll do is just share that recommendation that they have on each one of these. Under uh, Article 3, the elected official salary uh, that is, we have made some uh, changes in this too on uh, Article 3. I would encourage the, uh, the board, if you don't want to vote on your own salary, that you would vote on all excluding the uh, selectmen's would be my suggestion. Uh, but on the town clerk salary, uh, we've had a little bit of a couple of changes. So we have up to uh, 92490 So that would be what the current incumbent would receive effective July 1st of uh, 2019, uh, 2018. And that to specifically identify that that position would now be slated in the MS5 category, which is the non-union salary scale, with the intent that uh, town meeting kind of be alerted that in the future, uh, this prof professional position would be slated in the, the salary scale accordingly. And whoever was to be elected uh, would get uh, whatever based on their credentials would be where they would be slotted. Uh, in terms of their performance review, which is also a requirement of the uh, kind of the salary scale, uh, we would just utilize the electoral process that if somebody gets elected, then that counts as their uh, satisfactory uh, performance review. So there would be no performance review done by the uh, done by the administrator. Thank you, Chris. You want to do one one by one? Well, perhaps uh, the, if, if excluding the selectmen, the uh, moderator would go from $300 to $1,000. The water commissioners would go from $500 each to $1,000 each, and there's three of them. So 
library trustees had not been previously compensated under this plan, which is, I, I dubbed it the FinCom proposal, uh, it would be $1,000 each. And then I've already alluded to the, uh, the town clerk being slotted. Thank you, Chris. Don? Mr. Chair, uh, I move that we uh, accept the FinCom's positions on the elected officials' salaries absent the selectmen position. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Any discussion? Larry? None. Julie? None. For now? None for now. Don? Um, I have a problem with all of it except for the town clerk. Um, I think that when we set out on this, there was many conversations about this. Uh, I think that the subcommittee for the finance committee did a great job on this. But given that the budget came in, I don't have the final number. I think it's 6.3%, Chris. Is that the uh, final budget number? 6.3. I'm looking at Carol in the back. The total, grand total? Uh, 7.2. 7.2. 7.2. So given the final budget number, 7.2%, uh, I think that this is, is an item that we should not pass. So any other discussion? Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. I, um, it seems like a lot to jump from zero to a thousand for a library trustee, and I'm just wondering about the protocol for libraries. Um, I guess it, it, being a selectman for three years at 1500 and having the amazing amount of work that I have, I just wonder why li a library trustee who's part of a larger board and only has one department is being offered a <coughs> thousand. So I don't know the protocol. Looks like Dana might have some answers for me. Dana. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Dana Costa, member of the subcommittee that got the finance committee to this point. Um, basically, this, um, it, it really doesn't matter. We really want town meeting to decide this. So getting it to town meeting was, was the ultimate goal here. So they'll be the ones taking it on. Um, we looked at the elected officials other than the town clerk, which is a separate entity all by itself and just said that um, they would do an increase from us. Uh, we looked at other towns. We looked at towns that were getting benefits, towns that weren't getting benefits. As far as the library specifically goes, we looked at the building that they've been struggling with for quite a while now. They've had to do lighting. They've had to do the addition. They've had to do all this work to get it to the point where they could put it out um, for the additional work that has to be done uh, and there's been a lot involved there and then you look at the value of their collection that's in the building and you say uh, they're meeting as often as members those other members that are elected um, why shouldn't they get the same compensation is kind of what we said there um, so um, there's also a, um, a tax purpose for making it one thousand dollars for each of those members uh, they can um, say that they work for the town in that point and be able to deduct that from their taxes in a way. So for many of them, if they don't reach certain thresholds. And then we just made the selectman salary a little bit higher than that. Uh, and again, it's for us to get the conversation going. Uh, there hasn't been this kind of um, attempt at all since 1987. Um, and we just wanted to make sure that the voters at town meeting decide this and they get a chance to discuss it and, and uh, I know there's not a lot of room to add to it and I don't even know if the moderator under this current wording of the article would even allow it to be added to there's room to subtract so uh, basically it was to hear from town meeting as to what they were thinking but that was our thoughts on, on making them all the same um, they That's don't get good. benefits they don't get anything else for their contribution. They're elected, they have to go through that process. We'll give them each a grand. That was the. Thank you, Dana. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. Three, two, Chris. Three to two. Thank you. Just Mr. Chairman, if I could, uh, we do have in the budget, these numbers have been funded at that level. I did have somebody approach me today saying that they may make a motion at town meeting floor to go above that to, to the exact point that was made. What, there, there's not a lot of room in the raise and appropriate 
So my thought is I will try to keep a certain amount of money, maybe $10,000 in free cash. And if someone did want to go higher, then they would at least have a mechanism for one year as transition dollars. We do, wouldn't normally fund uh, these things, but the, the FinCom proposal has been financed in this if someone wanted to try to go a little higher, which I've been told that someone is going to request that. I want to have at least some kind of contingency plan to, to fund it for the one year until we can have that be voted by town meeting. Thank you, Christina. I just think on the, somebody asking to go higher, they want to be prepared to be able to tell us where the money's coming from. Um, if we can't increase our raise and appropriate, or if we can't, uh, you know, are they suggesting that some, uh, something else be cut in its stead? Um, that's close to where we're at right now, unless Chris does something different. But the Finance Committee isn't suggesting anything different right now. So I will ask through the moderator to whoever's proposing a higher number that they also be prepared to suggest where that money's coming from. Thank you, Dana. Dana, I actually have one more question. If Go I ahead, Jenny. Um, I'm just curious because, you know, the article is about elected officials, but we don't have in here housing authority members. We also don't have, um, what was the other one I had in my brain? Uh, we didn't do county or state affiliated boards or elected people. We just did the local town ones. Okay. There was another one for the town. No, I can't think of it now. I'm sorry. Gene, I'm having that brain thing. Water with you. commissioners, <laughs> moderator, no. librarians. No. If you think of it, let us know. We'll be I glad will. to look at it. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Thank you, Dana. Chris, I'm going to skip over the uh, ah. town. Go ahead. School committee. They're not ours. They're not, They're not ours. Yeah. But they are ours so because the town elects them. But they're not ours. That's, a, that's a regional elect. board. A regional and. Um, we would have to, uh, I, I don't think it would be fair at all to um, pay the Howitch elected members and um, not pay the Chatham ones, so you'd have to go to both towns and talk to them about that. It might also be discussed in the memorandum, I don't know. Um, but at one point in Harwich, uh, the school committee in Harwich did ask for an increase, or they asked for $100 each. Um, they wanted the access to the insurance program and, and benefits. And town meeting resoundingly defeated that effort the last time they asked, so we didn't include them uh, because it's a regional board and um, right. it involves another town. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dana. Chris, I'm going to skip over the uh, town budget because I think there's going to be a lengthy conversation with the board on that. Maybe we can get into the school. Start off at Monomoy. That's fine. Uh, in terms <coughs> of uh, Monomoy, uh, at the last meeting, uh, the Finance Committee meeting, they voted four, four to one uh, in favor of the budget. In terms of the, uh, the Monomoy recommendation, the, um, it was the, the full amount of the uh, request is 25609390 and they did break that out to uh, the 25609609 but they took the $260,038, the portion which equals the capital needs in the district to be funded from a combination of free cash and capital exclusion, with the capital exclusion portion being subject to a ballot vote. So I just wanted to highlight that, the, those two pieces were the, um, the, the, the snack shack at the, uh, at the track, or the football field, and then the, uh, our portion of the $50,000 for their contingency plan. Stabilization plan. Thank you, Chris. We start this off with discussion from the board. Larry? Uh, I'm just trying to uh, be sure I understand the numbers. In the, uh, in the warrant article that we have tonight, the uh, estimated cost is $25,693,753. And the, uh, I know what the Finance Committee voted on, what we have in our previous document was uh, $25,609,390. Now, there's what's in the uh, warrant article is uh, a little over $84,000 greater than what was presented before. I'm just trying to, to match up the numbers. Chris? I'm not sure I, I think. Are you following me? Did you read the yeah, article? Yeah, I, I saw the same thing. We voted the 763. You followed the 763. Uh, yeah, the, the, the 25609 is what you guys voted on. No. You have a different number here. Oh, you voted that? Carolyn. 
And it's not what we have in our last Monomoy budget presentation either. So I'm just trying to. It's not in the packet either. The number was the difference was 84,000. 84, 363 difference. I'm Carol. wondering if that's how we uh, deal with the. That's IMA. the IMA with the golf department. So what's in the warrant? I, what's in the version of the warrant I received today is the 25609390 figure. Okay, so, so th this is updated from what we have in the packet. That's correct, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other discussion? No, no, I was just trying to clarify the numbers on this. Julie? No, I don't have any questions. You know? Nope, no questions. Don? I, yeah, I forget, excuse me. I was going to have one more comment or, or statement. Go ahead, Larry. Um, you know, as I said before, if you take out the uh, reduction in the uh, school debt, uh, this, uh, this, uh, the operating, if you look at just the operating expense, this is a 5% increase from before. And we were certainly, I know I was, and I know the, the school committee is working hard, but I was hoping they'd come back actually with somewhat of a decrease to move this down from a 5%. Uh, because in some ways, I'm, uh, and I know you don't intend this, but there's, it, it's not consistent. We used, screwed that when it was going up, was used to, in that advantage as, it, as an increase. Now it's being taken down to make it look better than it actually, than the operating expenses are. So I was hoping there'd be some more discussion, possibly not. That's why I saw this number. It looked like it was going up. I was, I was hoping there'd be a, some reduction in the uh, school cost coming into this to reduce it from the 5%. Uh, it's a comment. Thank you. Don? Thank you, Mr. <coughs> Chair. Um, actually, that was one of my first comments. Is that, uh, a little disappointing because more than just the one year, uh, it's a five-year trend that went up 25% over the five years uh, for the budget, for the operating portion. And it's just concerning because it's not possible for us to continue to fund a top-line budget item where they're the first bill c coming in and what we have left is what we fund the town with and, and meet our obligations for insurance and cost of living raises. I mean, so I was hoping for more. And then the question that I have because we did take a position in the budget meeting. Uh, where is the, uh, I gather that there was a combination that came out of the FinCom. We, we had talked about uh, putting both the uh, reserve 50,000 and the uh, uh, restrooms. Yeah, the restrooms uh, out to exclusion. We did. They, they did, did both. They did. Those the FinCom okay. did both so that same. Those, so this number is absent that, right? The mm -hmm. 25609390? That includes everything. That, that includes, that includes mm -hmm. everything. But w are we funding the portion of that out of uh, free it cash or are we doing both? As so you, Mr. Chairman, it, it has uh, raise and appropriate does the majority of it. And then we took the capital portion. The capital portion, we took the, the uh, capital exclusion. Those two capital exclusions are out of their capital number, and then we're funding the balance from free cash. So it's a combination of raise and appropriate for the lion's share of it, free cash for a portion of the capital that does not, does not include those two capital exclusion items. And that is the figure of the 260.38 yeah. that you gave. Yeah. Comes out of the 25609390. I think it's 38,000 is uh, our portion of the, the stabilization, which is its own separate, which that's actually in the, um, in the warrant. Yeah. And then I think it's 78,000 is the, uh, the number for the so bathrooms. But that was my question. Is that coming out of free cash? No. The bathrooms and the... And uh, the stabilization. And stabilization are both contingent upon okay. the capital exclusion. Because to, to me, the irony would have been to use free cash to go into a stabilization fund that would be coming away from our own stabilization money uh, mm -hmm. if we didn't spend it. Chris? Yeah, uh, just to maybe give a little bit of a flavor, we probably spent like 20 minutes at the uh, Finance Committee meeting having a uh, fairly lengthy discussion in regards to their budget. Uh, so I'll, I'll try to summarize a little bit some of that discussion. Uh, I know that with the, uh, they have steps and lanes, so they're trying to do a cost of living adjustment as well as they have uh, the steps and lanes that they have to take into account. Uh, their, their workforce is much more uh, of an active workforce. I think our health insurance wound up uh, netting out to about a 4% increase. Uh, they have many more employees that are 
um, full-time active, so they're much more driven by that 6% on the health insurance, so they were not able to lower that the way we were because of we're about 50-50 on retirees. And then I had asked a question that I was concerned about that when our health insurance rates went from 12% down to 6 I took the full value of that and, and made that be uh, part of the uh, reductions that, that we made. And on the Monomoy side, that they uh, did do a portion of that. They, I think it was about 250000 I think they did about 160000 uh, related to that. Uh, but they got a different number when the uh, state does the formula for their level of contribution that they're supposed to make. Uh, Chatham's went down slightly and ours went up. So that delta difference between those two numbers was formula driven, uh, if you would. So th they do have uh, commitments that, you know, I think this is very much in line with what they have to try to accomplish. They don't have, uh, I don't believe, any new staff uh, included in this budget. So it is a, uh, a level budget uh, from a staffing perspective. Uh, so I, I think they've, they've at least answered some of the concerns that I had specifically in regards to the health insurance piece and uh, why didn't they do a full commitment. But they are more formula driven than, than any other department is. Nancy, did you want to add anything to any of the comments or anyone from the school committee? <coughs> Thank you all for being here. All set. Um, Nancy Scott, I'm current chair of the school committee. Um, just to touch on what Mr. Clark was saying, talking about the minimum required contributions, back in January, the formula that we were given, so the numbers didn't come out from the governor. The governor's numbers didn't come out, I think, till either the day of or the day after the health insurance numbers came out. So it was right around that same time. But back in early January, the number that we were dealing with was the minimum required contribution was a total of, getting to that age, 15,996,456, whereas now the current, which is what we're using from the governor's numbers, is 16,476,873. And Harwich's specific requir required contribution went from 11,744,700 to 12,167,534. So that number gets plugged in, which what Mr. Clark was alluding to was that the health insurance went down, but then all of those equations get plugged in and it automatically boosted Harwich's share of the assessment back up a little bit. So you didn't get to realize the full savings of the health insurance. Thank you. So. John? <coughs> yeah, I, ju I just want to make one comment. Uh, it, just to be clear, the, the school budgets uh, on, uh, by state law aren't restricted by line item. Uh, so to the extent state, uh, I, the statement was made that there are no new hires and no positions, uh, that is not necessarily true. It could be, it may be, not, it may not be. Uh, because they are not restricted as to moving money around. Thank you, Don. Chris? You know, Mr. Chairman, I, I do want to, um, I know the superintendent's been a little under the weather. I think I did send him uh, a text that night after the meeting to, to kind of wish him well. But I, I think there are two factors here that you, you hear about the minimum level of contribution that, you know, generally towns are well above that. But, uh, and it's been a while since I've looked at this. I, I've studied this much more carefully previously. Uh, but there is a what's called a municipal revenue growth factor that whatever your base budget is for that year, if your um, income, if you would, or your taxes go up and you have a 3% increase, uh, that municipal revenue growth factor goes up and you're supposed to hit that. So that becomes your new target. Mm -hmm. So the, the school does have, uh, any school does have that element where it's not just meeting the minimum, but it's also adjusting and taking, making sure that you're keeping pace with what they call the municipal revenue growth factor, which are all those elements, property tax, as well as the, uh, any of the local receipts. So they, they do have requirements, again, um, not related to other departments that they have to try to comply with. Thank you, Chris. Larry, any follow-up? Uh, you know, not to be a dead horse because I know we're, we're working on it, but I don't see how we can, uh, 
you know, we have a conversation on fixed costs, but those are not fixed. They're what you negotiate, you know, labor costs and so on, even the same staffing. And I just don't, we have the same discussion every year, and I don't, I don't know how we, uh, we can sustain a 5 to 6 percent increase each year uh, with all our other obligations. And uh, I'd be interested when that growth factor is, because I don't see inflation and other, you know, factors you read about going up yeah, not sure uh, 5 or 6 percent uh, a year. Uh, and so I don't know how we, uh, as a town, I don't know if this is sustainable. Thank you, Larry. Julie. So <coughs> I understand all of these concerns, and I'm going to reiterate what I've said in the past and I believe to still be true, is that we're growing a system, we're trying to build it, we're trying to strengthen it. It's not something that's going to be done in a matter of, you know, four or five years. It's going to take us, you know, another few years, and we're losing <coughs> money if we, if we look to cut and some of this money, we see the astronomical impact that health insurance has on the budget. And so then we have the cost of living. We're dealing with it in our own budget. So overall, the last thing we want to do is destabilize our school system while we continue to try to strengthen it and grow it so we do not continue to lose money to other towns and to the charter schools. And the charter schools are the biggest hit we take. So overall, if we do something in, in a sense that looks like we're not looking to continue to, to fortify our schools, we may have a much more impact to our school system than we want to have and ultimately be looking at worse numbers overall. So I just want to clarify that. Thank you, Julie. Don? <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. That would be a concern if it weren't for the fact that there is a size uh, cap uh, on the high school for the charter. Uh, they can only accept what they can accept by lottery. So it's not going to be, there's going to be an explosion of kids escaping to the charter. Uh, it, again, I understand that uh, uh, concern, but it, to a certain degree, if you could put the time clock back and based on uh, repatriating uh, the Harwich kids who had choiced out to Chatham, we're looking at a system where essentially we're three quarters of the system, of, of the regional system except we don't have the same control that we would have had if it was our system. I, I think that the impact, though, the charter schools have had have increased to, to the town's budget because <coughs> ultimately the more that you've got, you've got Sturgis East and West, you've got Lighthouse, you've got other schools trying to compete for those students, and ultimately we'd want to keep them here, and we have our own cap at our high school. But if we can keep all those bodies here, or gain those kids back, or new kids, you know, that's money we're not losing, and that's money their budget's gaining. So I, I think that ultimately, if we're looking to go back and start cutting, we send the wrong message to the people that we're trying to attract. So that's my only point. I just wanted to clarify, I'm not sure where the 5% is coming from. Because we have an increase over last year's 3.4 as 4.18. I have. I, I can explain my numbers. Okay. And then we can uh, agree or disagree. Uh, the assessment you gave us uh, a couple months ago. There's a figure in here of uh, the tober. Uh, the, the overall fiscal year 19 assessment is 2560939. Uh, and then if you take the uh, if you run that down to the bottom, it turns out to be 4%. But part of that is there's also a $72,000 reduction that was, if you take out the debt in that, which is reduced, which makes the increase look smaller. And I was looking at it as operational, the same way with the, the EBIT on the you know, EBIT on business. You look at the operations, not the, uh, to see how you're doing as a, as a group. So the 5% I'm looking at is operational increase. And I pulled the debt out of that because that we have no, you know, we've argued all along when it was going up that we can't consider the debt. We've agreed to that. And that's not, and I don't want to discuss the debt. It was going up. Now it seems to be, you know, it's, it's going down a bit. So I was looking at is what we're doing in the operational sense. And that's where I got to 5%. Chris. I'm glad I brought my numbers. <laughs> Just uh, two, two points. One, when you, 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 we do have them broken down, you know, now Larry in the, uh, in the budget and they're, Operating costs went up 3.4%. Again, this is related to our assessment yeah. piece. 
so not the total the capital because it's a small number and they did go up is that 48 but that in 48 percent increase that includes the uh, 50,000 for the stabilization and transportation costs went up by 17 the debt did go down so that is and because it was debt excluded that means it's a uh, offset I, I did want to just uh, comment though I think to, uh, to to Julie's point about three years ago uh, as I was the administrator here there was a discussion and a debate and there was a disagreement amongst the budget and it's interesting that the I think it was over two hundred thousand dollars that that debate occurred and after that year or as a result of that year uh, there were 30 families from Harwich that chose to choice out and you know I, I look from a finance viewpoint that whatever money we may have saved having that discussion on the 200,000 it certainly cost us and I think looking at some of the literature uh, that uh, Mr. Carpenter did put through that they've actually gained 23 kids back so Cape Cod has a very fluid situation relative to school choice and uh, we can have kids vote with their feet I mean, we, we have a six percent increase with uh, Cape Tech because kids have voted with their feet to go back to DY uh, so you do have those ramifications that could come in and I think what I said to the FinCom the other night is you know the more we could be uniform together uh, the more likely we have that stability which will translate into hopefully less families making decisions to, to move mm -hmm. I just uh, want to point that out. I, I don't want to rebate the past, by, but this deserves some of a comment because I take Julie's point and, and, and there's merit to that. Uh, Chris, your argument, though, I, I, I'm disturbed with because at the time uh, the school came to us, I believe it was like 14, 15 percent increase, and we actually argued to drop it down, I think, like, at, like 8 or 10 percent. And a lot of it was we had this big public press that we were. Uh, we were, we were drastically cutting the budget, and we didn't. We didn't increase it as much as was first proposed. And so that argument got way out of hand on what was actually happening, and, and, and in the end, it had no relationship to reality at all. And that wasn't driven by the board as much as it was people that were protesting the reduction of what was initially proposed. It was never, it was never a cut. So I would hate to make that comparison in this discussion. Yeah, I think, Mr. Chairman, just the, the point of it is the more that we have discussions and disagreements, and, and I don't disagree at all, Larry, that some of those were driven by other factors. There were two, two sequences to that element, so I don't disagree. But the point is the more disruption on any level, we're going to have some ramifications for it. That was the point of it. So I just have a few comments. I think first and foremost, I want to make it crystal clear that I support the Monument Regional School District. Um, yeah. But I want to mention the Board of Selectmen's budget message. And the Board of Selectmen, and this pertains to the town budget as well, I just took you guys first. I think I'll probably be a little more critical on the town side. We had a five-year, the Board of Selectmen put together a budget message that asked for 2%. I put a lot of time and effort into this. The board made comments. We put this through. We voted it unanimously. And that, that was basically to get everybody on the same page that we cannot continue to increase budgets by three to seven percent or higher every single year and sustain it. Now, Chris gave us a five-year projection, so I happen to go back to the five-year projection for the and year number one into the five-year projection, year number two into the five-year projection, we've blown it away by two million and change. On that year, uh, 2019, we show a deficit of one million dollars. I think some of that deficit was made up by fee increases. We're not always going to have those fee increases. The rate of our growth in this town, it, you know, budget hearings, which it's funny when people come to Board of Selectmen meetings or when they develop something on Facebook to, to um, put down the Board of Selectmen for being thoughtful. During the Council on Aging's presentation, she didn't want to talk about this year's budget. She wanted to talk about next year's budget. And she gave us lots of stats on where the Council on Aging is and the fact that 50% of the people that live in the town of Harwich are over, over 60. Um, the, more, the more we raise the budget, the more people need assistance. The more people need assistance, the more we raise the budget. At some point, 
we all have to get together and we all have to reduce this budget and we cannot have four million dollar increases this year on the town side we asked for two percent and they came in at seven point two percent so I actually applaud you for coming in lower than five percent um, I also remember back to the blow up with the school a few years back before I was on the board or the tail end of it and I do know that people exited town um, and I knew I know it was heated conversation but that threat no longer even matters to me I do accept Monomoy for what Monomoy is but the town can't accept these budget increases and we have to work together to get those budget increases down at that time we discussed giving a certain amount of years and I asked Terry tonight what year t what year we were in but we did say that we wanted to give a five year and I believe Julie was involved in the conversation mm -hmm. that we were going to give them up to five years to get the budget straightened out and grow and figure it out I'm going to argue that you're going to lose a lot more students from people in town that can't afford the tax rate or that won't consider moving here because of the tax rate and the young families that will leave here because of the tax rate so before we go to a motion on this I would ask that you as a school committee take up the fact that you have a 25 million dollar budget town, our, our portion of the budget is 25 million dollars we can't sustain that increase every year nine years ago I believe we were at around 44 million this year we're at 65 million with another 30 million dollar ask for capital projects and three million dollars that we're spending on CPC money this year so we're gonna have a hundred million dollar year in town this year and I hope I'm not the only one that sees that it's not sustainable with that, can I get a motion? <laughs> Mr. Chair, I move that we approve the school committee's budget and I'll use the 25,609. Oh, that would be great. 25 million. 25 million, <laughs> sorry, 25,609,390 with $260,038 out of there for capital needs which the total I don't have that in front of me so that isn't really right though that's the numbers we're saying that we're going to remove for capital items mm -hmm. those are the numbers in the art in the article okay the capital items so are just being funded differently so, right 76 and 36 you want to give Carol us the breakdown the Carol just and we'll make it part of the motion yeah Okay, so to fund the annual operating budget of the Monomoy Regional School District for FY19 um, for a total of $25,609,390 to be raised for this purpose. And further of that total, two sixty zero three eight dollars um, is equal to the capital needs of the district to be funded from a combination of free cash um, of a total of $147,336. Um, and capital exclusion uh, f made up of two components. One is um, the restrooms for $76,077 and stabilization for $36,625. So moved. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. Three to two. Thank you. Chris, move on to Article 4, please. You want to go back to Article 4? Uh, capital items from free cash? Article 9, oh. sorry. That's okay. Yeah, Article 9. Number 4. Uh, Article 9 was, yeah, I'm sorry, number 4 on your list. Article 9 was uh, voted by the Finance Committee 5 0 under the item here on uh, article 9 is to capital items funded from free cash item under fifty thousand uh, dollars just in the way this is designed is to have uh, six sub items that would be read uh, as part of the uh, article or known as part of the article uh, 40,000 40, Alvar House uh, for uh, Brooks Academy Boiler, uh, 48,000 Deputy Chief Vehicle, 
nozzle and valve replacement program uh, funded by a grant, a uh, town funded portion would be 3750 a grant funded portion would be 71250 uh, the taser replacement program 36000 and the uh, first year of that. And then 2018 Ford uh, transportation passenger wa uh, wagon for the rec department at 35000 I do applaud that we have a, a member of the finance committee uh, that works for RTA. Uh, we, we did have the uh, recreation director go over and look at it. Uh, the recreation director, they had two vans that were for free, if you would. Uh, both of them are about 10 years old and have about 150,000 miles on it. Uh, the recreation director thought that it made sense to have a new one to do primary driving and then to use these as backups. So if this is uh, voted, then I probably would put in a request to the RTA to see if we could have those two vans made available to us. One is kind of a spare for the, for the other uh, and see if we can have that so we can be have a, a backup uh, van that would do local trips. Thank you. The grand Chris. total of that, uh, those numbers are 234000 Chris, on the nozzle and valve replacement program, it says in parentheses grant funded, but it's still in the total? Yeah, we need to appropriate. If we know that we're going to get money from a grant, we need to identify it. So that's just identifying that grant. That's the way that grant application would be bro broken out. So the cost to the town would be 263 minus the 71250 uh, it's 71250 plus the 3750 so 75000 total. Would come off. Would be paid for by grant? No, just the 71250 would be paid by grant. We would raise and appropriate 3750 Wait. We, we, so the 5%. That's your appropriate. 5% match. Yeah, I see. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? Okay, questions from the board. Don? No. Sit down. I have a few questions. So, <coughs> uh, when we had the vehicle replacement uh, presentations, I don't remember what meeting that was, but um, Heinz and Natural Resources was talking about he has an SUV right now, and yeah. um, the deputy fire chief and fire chief were saying that it's really the fire inspector's car that is done, so that the current deputy fire chief's vehicle would go to the fire inspector and the deputy fire chief would get a new um, car. So the idea had occurred to me that we have an SUV from Heinz because it's going to be replaced with an F-150 because the SUV doesn't work for his type of work. Could there be a savings this year since we have so many things in the budget to uh, um, give Heinz's car to the fire inspector and save the 48,000 for the deputy fire chief until next year? Yeah, actually two things. I, I might refer to Dave uh, to answer the question about who's ultimately gonna end up with the vehicle. Uh, Heinz's vehicle was 29,000. That has been taken out uh, at my recommendation. Uh, so Heinz's vehicle on the new list is, is no longer on there. Uh, and the reason for that is he requested a pickup truck. Uh, we do have those are sometimes convoluted stories, and I apologize in advance, but the water department had a uh, vehicle that was damaged, a pickup truck that was damaged uh, as a result of an insurance issue. So we did receive funding to replace that vehicle, which is a, a pickup truck, which is what Heinz was looking for. I think what we would like to do is Heinz's vehicle is a hand-me-down that the DPW was able to fix up. The water department has more of a need for an SUV than they do for a pickup. It would be for the station operator as they drive around different locations. So the thought is that we can take Heinz's vehicle out of the mix. He may be able to end up with a pickup truck uh, from the water department and then he would transfer his vehicle to the water department for uh, the pickup truck that they get from him. So we have taken that vehicle out of the equation for the lift so we have 29,000 off. So that covers Heinz's vehicle. I, I'm not sure in terms of, uh, I may request uh, the, the uh, deputy chief uh, comment on who ultimately gets what. I know that the fire department desperately is in need of a new vehicle. And so uh, it's still in there. One so second, David. Chris, okay. uh, Chris, just to be clear, now we're looking at a number of 263,103 that's not 263,103. It should be uh, 234 even, 234,000. Okay, even. go ahead, David. Uh, David Blank, Deputy Fire Chief. So just a couple of things. It, 
Um, when the Chiefs car was delayed purchase several years ago, this kind of bumped us back to where we're at. So my car now is 100,000 miles on it. And for a vehicle that's responding routinely to emergencies, um, we try to keep that mileage lower. So my car would replace ultimately what's used by the duty shift officer's car, which is a hand-me-down police cruiser, and that would become the inspector's car. It's a little bit, it's just more straight line to say we're replacing the inspector's car because ultimately we are, but it's, it's a hand-me-down process. So the goal for us eventually is to try and not have hand-me-down police cruisers in regular response mode um, for fire department vehicles. So that's kind of where we're working at. So yes, we could do what you're talking about, although there's another plan in the works, but that also now pushes my car back another year, which means the mileage will be higher. So when it finally gets kicked down, it's gonna be that much closer to replacement. Thank you. Thank you, David. You're welcome. Julie? I don't have any questions. Larry? No, I, uh, so now I ask mine because we had a big involved discussion and, and I think <laughs> it worked out. I just didn't understand it all, so. <laughs> so, go ahead, Jean. I just have one more thing. Um, as far as the Brooks Academy boiler, um, I I thought that Howard Junior Theater, or Cape Cod Theater Company, was responsible for some of the maintenance over there. Only the old rec building, not Brooks Academy. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, I'm thinking. Okay, <coughs> never mind. Sorry about that. Building. Sorry about that. So I feel a little off being critical on the deputy chief's car, being that the fire department, uh, which I give him credit for, came in under the 2%, and I think it was um, admirable that you guys sharpened your pencils and came in under, and thank you. Um, that came in late in the budget process, and given my support for the fire department, full support for the New East College Fire Department, and full support for your, your portion of the budget. Um, I'd like to see, you know, I got the uh, list from the, from Carol on how many vehicles the town owns. And I'd like the town administrator to give some thought on vehicles before we proceed with purchasing. And I'm gonna ask this of other departments later. Um, I, I've done a fair amount of looking to see what sits and what doesn't. And David, I know yours doesn't sit. But the fire inspector maybe would be better served with one of the uh, new smart cars that we're talking about if we go uh, green community, unless you guys disagree. but. I would like to see, Chris, the uh, Brooks Academy, not the Brooks Academy, the Arbor House Boiler, in my own opinion, pulled out of this uh, because we're doing an assessment or asking money to have an assessment done of the Arbor House to see what we're going to do with it. And I don't see the sense in replacing a boiler. Uh, I would like to see some depu uh, the deputy fire chief. I'd like to see some work be done on that. Uh, thank you for removing the F-150. Uh, and I would say on the 2018 Ford Transport passenger van, I think the rec department is in dire need of that. Norm? I do disagree with the, uh, with the thought on the inspector's car. It's a label inspector, but it's a 24-7, it's a 365 vehicle. Um, we do respond in it um, uh, Monday through Thursday uh, uh, on those shifts that the inspector does use that, but it does fill other purposes. We presently have two staff cars down now. So we have to move things around, uh, that's routine. Um, my car, uh, through some political um, issues, uh, is too small to pull anything. I don't have a trailer hitch on my car that I used to have. So we're limited as to what we can uh, pull boats with, pull trailers with, uh, and uh, get into some parts of the town that I no longer can because my car is too small. Okay. So we really do try and stretch the use of these vehicles and we can't wring the sponge any more than we already have. Uh, again, we had the, the inspector's car had to be towed from Shaw's this morning. So thank we need the vehicle. Thank you, Norm. Thank you for the clarification. Any other discussion? Janelle? I just wanted to say um, the Albro House, I would agree with you on that. Um, that didn't occur to me, but I think that's a great idea to pull that. I would support that also. Larry? No more discussion. Julie? On the Albro House, though, I thought that um, with the green communities, that that was one of the things on Sean's um, list of items that may be able to be paid for by um, <coughs> engaging in green communities. Yeah, I, I think, uh, for you, Mr. Chairman, uh, I think Sean's plan is that uh, the initial payment that we would receive once we get all the steps completed and, and this town meeting approved, uh, we would have availability of about $140,000 he does have more needs than he has money. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it would go towards one of those needs. He, he has been mm -hmm. fully engaged in this process and he would lay it out. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, I don't know what the, the number breakdown is between those two. Uh, he did submit that jointly, so I'm not sure if it is as simple as, you know, taking out 20 and, and covering it. So I'm not necessarily comfortable. I would rather leave it in, and then we don't have to spend it if you want to delay. And certainly we could make that request to Sean uh, to get a better number. But, you know, warrant is going to go to print in the next, you know, I think by tomorrow or Wednesday at the very latest. We're just waiting on a few FinCom recommendations. Did you get them all in today? Yes. Thank you. Any other discussion? Um, motion on this? I'll move we uh, accept and adopt Article 9 uh, for capital items funded from free cash under $50,000 uh, for a total of uh, 234000 two, two thousand. Second. Moved and seconded. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Thank Four you. To one. Yes. Snow and ice deficit, Chris. Article 11. Yeah, on uh, the recommendation that was made to FinCom, and I would uh, do the same recommendation here, is that on fund snow and ice deficit, uh, we do have uh, a contingency plan of about $250,000. We have spent $230,000, uh, but obviously it snowed a little bit today. I actually saw snow in the forecast, so there may be a need to buy some more material. Uh, so I would recommend that we have a final recommendation at town meeting, and I believe that we will live within that $250,000 because we're about two thirty dollars now, but we don't have a precise number, so the recommendation should probably pen a more precise number. Discussion from the board? Janelle? I just have a question, uh, what the number actually consists of. Does it, does this have anything, is this just materials or does this have anything to do with like the overtime it takes to plow the roads on the weekends as Link was saying at the budget hearing? Yeah, it, through you Mr. Chairman, uh, it actually covers uh, four components, uh, I'm sorry, three components. Uh, material is one, and then uh, he has hired equipment, so that's outside vendors, yep. and then salary and wages would be the overtime. So we budget 134000 and we're over uh, by 230000 Okay. Any other discussion? No. Any other motion? Mr. Chair, I move that we uh, approve the fund snow and ice deficit for FY18 pending the number to be determined at town meeting. That's fine. Second. Moved and seconded. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Chris, and Article 14. The, uh, Article 12. 12. 12, 12 sorry. On shortfalls. Uh, on Article 12, uh, at this point, we have <coughs> identified 160,000. I don't have my number right with me. We, we have, uh, do you, yeah, do you have your number? We've identified $100,000, in police detail, $25,000 for um, a senior exemption. So this one we may want to just pending additional in case there's any last minute changes to the budget, uh, but those are the two uh, that we have at this moment. Discussion from the board, Don? Nope. So seven, 75000 additional police detail that's yeah, not the, in the police budget? The police budget. detail was, uh, well, they, they don't have it. We have a revolving account, which we're allowed to have a revolving account for police detail. Then what happens is sometimes vendors ask for people to do details. Uh, those details are done. We have a legal obligation to pay those within a week, so we do. We don't always collect the money that people owe us. And over a large period of time, this is built up. So now we have a $75,000 deficit in that account. So this would make up for the deficit. And we've already had discussions about making sure that our collection efforts are as tight as they can be so we don't get into having too much of a shortfall. But I think the 75,000 was probably accumulated over 10 to 15 years of people not paying us over that period of time. And then the 25,000 senior exemption is what Yeah, Carol the 25,000 is uh, we had funded a couple years ago, uh, or there was a, uh, a bylaw that was approved for uh, folks to go above and beyond. I think the level was 1,000. We went to 1,500. Correct. 
and to fund that difference, we needed to have a funding source attached to it. Mm -hmm. So this is a funding source that would attach to that. And this is pending the special legislation getting approved. Once the special legislation, once the special legislation gets approved, we can then build it into the overlay account. But because it's pending, we have to have a funding source to cover that prior to funding it in the overlay. Okay, thank you. Questions, Julie? The only question in terms of that seventy-five thousand, do we have a chance at recouping any of those costs? Yeah, I know that. Some yeah, of we them are, are in the old. process of uh, attempting to recoup. I don't know if uh, you have an update on the number. Much of this is a timing issue. So, at the end of the fiscal year, we can't have uh, when there's amounts due <laughs> to the town and that fund goes into a deficit. Um, we have to play, pay the police officers. We don't have a choice. Right. So whether we've received enough money yet to pay them or not, it's, it's irrelevant. Mm -hmm. um, so over the past like two years, we've seen a pretty incredible spike in police details that happen in the springtime, and it's just a timing difference. So it just takes time to collect all that money. Okay, great. Thank you, Larry. Uh, no. <coughs> Can I get a motion? Mr. Chair, I move that we. <coughs> approve the fund budget, I'm sorry, to uh, fund the budget shortfalls and the budget transfers for FY18 in the amount of 75000 for police details and 25000 for senior exemptions. And pending, and any, pending additional any additional information at town meeting. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, construction of phase two of CWMP, article 14. On Chris. this one, Mr. Chairman, <coughs> um, Article 14, this was uh, no recommendation pending additional information by FinCom of 500 on uh, Article 14. Uh, part of the reason for that, again, I had made a, uh, a request that we do have numbers. We will have a more detailed estimate, engineer's estimate that's being done by CDM. The good news is that uh, they had a one an estimate in, I think it was Fall River, uh, that came in pretty close. So we, we weren't planning on going, nor can we go to town meeting with bids because you have to have a, an appropriation and an estimate uh, prior to getting uh, SRF funding eligibility. And they only give you the SRF funding eligibility when you get the estimate. You, so you can't proceed with SRF funding until you go through their process. Uh, so I do hope to have a more detailed estimate uh, prior to town meeting. And then the second component to that is there's a $2 million, uh, I think it's 2.1, for uh, the connection, interconnection into uh, the Chatham. And Chatham is in the process through their engineer of uh, generating the numbers. Uh, in terms of that, uh, one of the things that, depending upon the size of the station, the amount of flow, we have a percentage obligation, so we are still in the process of working with Chatham to work those numbers out. In an initial discussion with them, it does appear that we would have a higher level of flow and therefore a higher cost uh, related to that plant. So I am hoping to get those numbers refined uh, down so they're refined so we have them more accurate. I would anticipate that those numbers would slightly go up more than they currently are. but. With those two things kind of still outstanding, uh, I would recommend that we hold off or pending additional information. Chris, the size of the flow, we negotiated a deal for 300,000 gallons. How does yeah. that change? Uh, actually, their pump station, they have a pump station that would do Chatham flow and Harwich flow. And our portion of that cost is depending on how big the pump station is. It was kind of conceptual when we were working on it. And now that we know or get a better sense for which houses in Chatham will hook up to it and which houses in Harwich will hook up to it, uh, they have a more refined opportunity to get a better number on what that plant would be. And I think originally it was kind of envisioned that it may be 50-50 on the flow or 75-25. I don't think anyone really knew. But now we know the number of houses that will be connected so it's the percentage related to that pump station. It's more on the Chatham side. The number has been adjusted down than it is on the Harwich number going up. Ultimately, we know the flow going in. So the 3, 300,000 gallons still stands, Michael. It's yeah. just the, uh, the cost of that pump itself and, who, and how we share that. I was just confused. You just said that we have more flow. 
We have more flow. Okay, but the I, portion that but was we're not in having that conversation. Not. Okay. Yeah, sorry. The Chatham number is being adjusted down. Okay. Just to so do you want an approval on this pending further information, or do yes, you want? Yes, please. Okay, Mr. Chair, I move that we approve the construction of the interconnection with Chatham and Sewers in the southern section of Pleasant Bay Watershed, Article 14, in the amount of, well, pending further information, but in the amount of 22450 Thousand. Second. Moved and seconded. Any other discussion? Paul? Uh, well, wait Mary? a minute. My only discussion is why put a number in there if we don't know what it is? You know, we, we're trying to get a design, more exact de design that we all want to be sure we're, we're comfortable with going to town meeting. I would. Uh, I mean, I think that was the motion was to use that as the base amount and the then pending, pending the discussion. Uh, okay. That's Adam the amount, the right. It pending. The pump pending. Right. So we'll change that depending if, if need be. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. I just want to be clear on right. that. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Article 21. 21 is on the uh, DPW, the purchase of equipment. <clears throat> I think uh, Mr. Hooper did uh, provide some additional information for the board, uh, but in terms of the request, it did go to uh, Finance Committee. Finance Committee voted 21. Five zero zero, and uh, the request is for three trucks, uh, a, a three one-ton truck, in the total amount of two hundred and fifteen. Uh, prior to this, I mean, I I did look at what the board had wanted in terms of specifically looking at vehicles. I had a discussion <coughs> with uh, Mr. Hooper, and we did decide that uh, the uh, body for the sweeper could be held off. That was one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. Uh, I would say, and I think he put it into his his uh, memo. Uh, he was he had two years where he was up in I think the 400 or 450 range, and I said I would feel more comfortable if we could keep things around 300,000 to replace the rolling stock. I think he has over five million dollars worth of rolling stock, and this is less than five percent of the fleet that would be updated. Uh, but by going down to 215, I am a little bit concerned that this number is lower, and we're probably looking at in uh, 20 and 21, potentially having to do more vehicles uh, as we kind of lose that sequence is the concern. So the, the request that was voted <coughs> unanimously that by FinCom was 215,000 for three vehicles. Thank you, Chris. Don? I, I get that uh, there's a sequencing problem and you're, tr and you're trying to turn over a reasonable amount of vehicles each year, but. I am with Michael on that thought, uh, is that there's a lot of things that we wish that we could do, uh, but in this particular year, uh, with the aggregation of stuff that we've had uh, in front of town meeting you know, over the last few years and with the budget the way it is right now, it, it's kind of tough to go to that well. Uh, so I, mean, I, I understand the concern, but it, it's, it's kind of a necessary hit. Thank you, Don. Janelle? Nothing right now. Julie? You know, I've, I'm struggling with the vehicles as well. Um, the, o the only fear I have is that if we, if we do delay, is do we look at paying more in financing costs in the future? That's, that's what I'm struggling with, so. Larry? I take what everyone says. I just don't think we have a choice right now. The way Lincoln describes it, we increase maintenance and downtime. But it costs us more than what we're, what we're going to spend. So. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate all the information Link gave us. I appreciate his chart on what he wants. Um, I think at this, at this point, again, I'll reiterate, we have a $65 million budget. We have $3 million worth of CPC money we're spending. We have um, $30 million worth of asks at town meeting on top of that. And we've got to say no. And we have to learn to say no. Um, and I think the town administrator, ex especially on vehicles, like I said, I've had time to look through this and I've had time to look at vehicles that just sit and it's time that we manage our vehicles better. So I think uh, asking to reduce by one would be what I would ask and what I would vote for. I would vote for two, I would not vote for three. One of these trucks only has 100,000 miles on it and I don't know how many private business owners you all know that um, get to replace their vehicles when they hit 100,000 miles, but there's not a lot of them. And they can't go back to the taxpayers and ask for money. 
So can I get a motion? Excuse me, Mr. Chair. Go ahead. It's a point of clarification for the uh, town administrator. Uh, which which one uh, is the one with the lower? Amount? I have no idea. It's not broken Actually, out. Actually, the um, the park one has only fifty nine thousand miles on it, according to this chart. Okay. So and it's be being replaced for eighty thousand. Well, this one has all the miles in. If you look under the oh, not on that. In here, the Article Twenty One lists the miles. Okay. Okay. One hundred forty five thousand seven hundred eighty five. One hundred one thousand. 26 and 147,995 for each vehicle. And yet in the chart that was provided in today's packet, it's completely different numbers. Yeah, I don't know. We have this the whole is what the article says. Right. So we have all the different mileage and or hours. That's why I'm confused. Yeah. Well, I think that the original chart was done at an earlier time, so I don't know if that's updated. I would presume that, that Lincoln would have the most up-to-date number in the... Uh, description, the vehicle in the uh, description, right? Mr. Chair, that's exactly why I was asking the question, because if we were to take two of these to approve, you'd have to know which one we were taking out. No, I think we could, I think we could rely on Chris. I mean, I would take out one of the $80,000 ones personally, but. Yeah, there are two 80,000s and then 155,000, so. I'm and again, uh, you know, in a $65 million budget, this isn't gonna make a whole, whole lot of difference. But I'm, I'm hearing an awful lot lately. Lately, it's only 1,000, it's only 1,500, it's only 3,000. It adds up. And we should be being fiscally responsible for our tax base. Mr. Chair, that, but I'm still where I'm at. I mean, if we arbitrarily take out an 80,000 instead of the 55,000, I'm not sure we're pick, taking the right truck out. Well, I'm willing to spend 135,000, not 160,000. So that's where well, I'm at. We, we don't have to make that decision. We could just vote for two and leave that decision. Well, we make the reference to the one with the, keep the one in with the lower miles. I don't think we do that. I think let Link think. We, we, we pick a 55. Well, you have to vote a number. 135,000 would be my preference. I, I move, Mr. Chair, that we uh, approve Article 21 at a funding level of $135,000. With two, with two dump trucks. I'll second it. Any discussion? Well, uh, only to be consistent, we have uh, your points, Mike, about our budget. Uh, I certainly am arguing with Scusha. We look at their budget, so I, I want to be consistent throughout that we're all looking at that. So. Well, we already voted on that one, so. Yeah. Any other discussion? I just don't think we should replace any of them, to tell you the truth. With the with the chart that was provided in today's packet, um, if you look through it, it's we're not even replacing. There are three vehicles in the DPW fleet listed as poor. We're only replacing one of them. The other two that he wants to be replaced are listed as fair, which is a higher grade. So I just think we should take it off the table completely, especially with the um, incredible amount of overtime and uh, the snowstorms, I just, I don't know. It's a lot of money. O salaries and wages for the snowstorm was $105,000 for overtime. So. Well, we can get into that for the town operating budget. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm just not going to vote for any of it. Any discussion? Any further discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. 4-1, Chris. Thank you. Uh, Article 66, Stabilization Fund. Yes, Mr. Chairman, on the uh, Stabilization Fund, I would again recommend that town meeting, uh, wait, you know, pending town meeting, but just to give you a sense with the reduction of uh, Heinz's vehicle and with, um, I, I obviously need to take some of these other elements into account, uh, but currently I have, uh, Article 65, which is stabilization, at uh, 700,000, and then OPEB would be funded at 700,000. So just to give you a, a sense for the amount that would be going into those two, uh, 700,000 according to the plan, and any of these reductions that are made out of free cash would be put into those two categories. So we could leave stabilization open until we finish this and put the money into that? Well, I would, I guess I would suggest to do 700,000 uh, and then pending yeah, additional yeah, interest, pending, 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 pending additional pending interest. 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 Yeah. Okay. It's Larry's okay. favorite language. Any discussion? Can I get a motion on this one? 
Are we doing both the 66? Doing both the same. Okay, all right. Mr. Chair, I move that we approve Article 66 uh, for the stabilization fund estimated cost of 700,000 and uh, the OPEB trust fund Article 67 for 700,000 for and paying. Pending. Pending, sorry, pending additional information. For both. For both. Second. Moved and seconded, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Article 68, prior year's unpaid bills, Chris. On the uh, prior year unpaid bills, uh, we do have a number. I've been carrying about 20,000. We have identified 10,200, I believe is the number. And I would recommend just in case something comes in between now and town meeting that that be uh, held open so we can do pending the 10,500 uh, and pending any additional uh, bills that may come in between now and then or be identified between now and then. The, okay, let's um, start with conversation. Larry, anything? Can you remind us, uh, please, just the general categories he's calling into? Uh, uh, both of these are legal. Legal. legal so broadly stated, are they li liability, insurance, uh, employment? On uh, uh, just the, uh, the first one, it was uh, Matthew. Matthew was regarding a, um, an employee employment matter at the police department. Okay. And Coppola and Coppola is related to tax title and penalty. Okay, thank you. Julie? No, I don't have any. Janelle? Mm -mm. Don? Nope. Can I get a motion? Mr. Chair, I move that we fund the prior year's unpaid bills, which is the Article 68 in the estimated cost of 10,500 in pending, pending for any, any additional costs before town meeting. Second. Moved and seconded. Any additional conversation? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Going back to number two, which is Article 4, Town Operating Budget. Chris, can you give us the uh, total number that you're at today? Yeah. Under Article 4, the uh, Total request is $37,070,741. Uh, that is broken out in terms of uh, the majority of it is raise and appropriate. Um, I don't know if you want me to read down the funding list. I, I guess I will. Uh, free cash, 78000 It's 37070041 dollars okay. And that breaks out to... Um, and let me see, I think Finance Committee did vote 5-0, uh, but pending final uh, number. On the operating budget? Yeah. Yeah. I had that for, I had that for Monomore, so I, so. What was the vote again? I apologize. It's 4-1. to 4-1, to one. Four four to one. One. okay, thank you. I had recorded those unanimous, my apologies. On the uh, Finance Committee recommendation, the funding source is 78000 from free cash for small uh, capital-related items. Water Enterprise Fund is 732. That's uh, indirect costs that they pay their portion of. Uh, the uh, CPA, uh, Community Preservation Act, this is the debt service on land bank, 588750 uh, Cable, we do receive cable money that is uh, sent through to fund cable operations, 156450 uh, betterments uh, for some of the dredge work that's been done in previous, uh, as well as streets. Uh, that's 257885 Golf improvement, 75600 That's to fund some of the park barn operations. Uh, waterways and mooring, uh, that is $236,058. Uh, that is some of the debt service funding that go towards some of the debt service for those projects. Uh, FEMA, we have a FEMA account which we fund the, uh, the emergency management director, 13608 uh, The town clerk, state aid to fund some of her uh, salary increase for this year. Uh, we have identified a funding source. That funding source won't last forever, but it will fund for one or two years. Uh, so we'll make that adjustment into uh, property tax for next year. And then uh, two of the major funding sources, local receipts in general is uh, 12 million. 806-145, and from raising appropriate from taxes, 22,109,817 for a grand total 
of $37,070,741. Thank you, Chris. Chris, can you tell me what the budget overage would be without the debt service? I actually was looking up. Um, I don't have, I think, the subtotal of everything minus the debt service. The debt service itself, just had that. The debt service itself went from uh, $2,608,420 to $4,762,464. Uh, so debt service went up by $2.1 million, an 82.6% increase. And I would just remind that on the, um, the vast majority of the debt that is done is done as debt excluded debt. So it's uh, debt that specifically went before the voters specifically indicated that they wanted to go above and beyond Proposition 2.5 uh, to fund projects. These go from the full gamut from the uh, school. The mo most of it has been the Monomoy School and now with the uh, IMA agreement with uh, Chatham coming online and some of the other projects that haven't been funded or not fully funded by fees are taken out of uh, the debt exclusions. But all these are specifically voted above and beyond uh, by the voters at the, um, at the ballot. Thank you, Chris. Questions? Uh, actually, you know what, Chris, let's take up the, um, the job descriptions in there. One, one of the items in the budget was 60000 plus for a help desk specialist. Yeah. You want to go over that with us, and we'll decide yeah, the, on the, that. The two elements, uh, and I think we were in the um, in the three point four percent range for a total increase. And I think if you take these two elements out, you probably get us into the two percent range overall in the um, the operating budget. Uh, the two items are, I think, it was sixty two thousand. Uh, we have it in the um, in the sixty two thousand dollars uh, and some change for the help desk. Uh, I, I think it's important, and I know that we've received some uh, input from various departments. Uh, and my concern is that when you have a one-person department, uh, such as we have, you have an IT director that he has no time to kind of look at the big picture because he's too bogged down in day-to-day. -day. Uh, so this would give a one-person department into a two-person department with the idea that the IT director would continue to do kind of the strategic and, and the programs such as MUNIS that co covers a lot of different departments. The concept behind the help desk is that it would give a specialist that when someone wants to integrate new software, I know the uh, Council on Aging as a for instance is putting in My Senior Center, uh, so that is a new software package and I know that they've been very interested in having some assistance and help uh, from folks in terms of integrating that. I think paying for that software kind of initially has been come from the friends to, to help with that effort. Uh, but the implementation of that, uh, Foster's been so straight out with other issues he hasn't been able to get to it. Uh, I did have, uh, happen to have a discussion today uh, and we certainly will look at uh, with the um, county. The county does offer IT services I think that there is some potential value. Uh, having Bob Lawton in the office, Bob is very familiar. He was the finance director for the county. Uh, and what he had indicated to me is that they do have an IT department. Some towns, uh, mostly smaller towns down Cape, uh, have uh, some of their services. So I would like to explore and identify what services we can have the county do and try to make an arrangement but the sounds of what they do is that's one day a week having somebody that may come out and provide some assistance. I think it makes sense to pursue that. Uh, but this request basically gives us a two-person department in lieu of a one-person department. It is the only uh, additional position that I had requested in this budget. Uh, and it does come where we did cut another position, uh, some of that position in the community development uh, department went to fund another part-time position to make that full-time, but about half that salary was saved, and we have received contributions from both fire and police to help fund the uh, 62000 So I think it is uh, desperately needed, and hence in the budget. The other budget item that was also included was $90,000 for the beginning of the wastewater. Uh, I have spoken about that previously. 
Um, so that is also in there in terms of a, uh, a cost. Chris, will you just give us a, um, this 62,000 ish, does that include benefits or is it 21,000 on top of that? It's just the, um, we, we included some provision in the health insurance budget for uh, benefits. So we can't predict in any year if you know a spouse loses a benefit and then someone comes on board at the qualifying event. So we do have in the budget a, uh, a number to try to account for uh, people coming in during enrollment period during the year. So okay. we would absorb uh, the additional health that insurance in that number. And that number is roughly 20,000 for a benefits package? Is probably about closer to 23, 24,000. Thank you. Um, just for health insurance. Will you just give us a quick overview of the $90,000, the uh, wastewater portion of this? Yeah, the 90000 for uh, wastewater, um, we will have a bill once we connect up to Chatham in uh, 2022, probably in the neighborhood, and I, I do need to meet with uh, Bob Duncanson to try to narrow this number down, but we have an obligation to have 23% uh, of the plant operating costs, the base plant operating costs, they, they have a contract with Wesson and Sampson for a million dollars to operate that plant. That part of the IMA <coughs> formula is driven by the size and flow of the plant. This is not the amount of flow that actually goes in. It's actually 23 point something percent of the plant. Uh, so we are looking at in 2022, a bottom line payment of 230,000 plus whatever flow that we send, which is variable. The variable fl flow should mostly be offset by the uh, people that are paying for that, but we are looking at over 230,000. And I'm just concerned that to try to, to, try to get 230,000 in one budget year is, is gonna probably necessitate um, potentially even an override to get that kind of dollars to, to have the budget work. So your intention is to start that this year and build it up That's for the correct. previous. Thank you. All right, let's start uh, on IT, and we'll start with Larry. Uh, thank you, Michael. I, uh, uh, it's a good job description. I think my concern has been uh, all along that, or at least in the last several months, that we see an overall plan of, of how we're going to approach the various uh, uh, software programs. I, I note in the uh, minutes this week, for instance, that uh, they would like to connect the, uh, uh, the health would like to, uh, I had lost it already, uh, the water data with their data uh, and the software databases don't allow that. I know we've had these had discussions this morning concerning our wastewater and uh, it's, it's difficult to uh, combine uh, our, our planning database with the assessor's database with the uh, what CDM Smith database is coming out with to uh, keep track of uh, not only the design but how we go forward you know, move that and so we have a we need to have a good look at uh, what our overall plan is and how we are we getting the softwares that mesh together as an overall plan and that's what been my push back to this position is I want to see that happen although Don's mentioned security which also folds into the same idea that we need to, we need to, to look at this as one uh, town grouping of software and, uh, and how we're, that makes that work. And so I would support this, but I wanna be sure that gets happened because we can't go along individually and uh, continue, well, let me say it more positively. We need to find a way so that all these databases, are a we're able to merge these databases, make use of them. Especially if we look at trying to uh, uh, reduce our budgets in the future you know, we need to be able to do that. And I'm assuming that this position, that'd be one of his primary, cri first criteria, first job would be to, to, to do that. Thank you, Larry. Julie? You know, I feel, I feel like, I mean, look, when it comes to this technology position, I know that we need it. I, I know that we've talked a lot about it. Um, I guess going back to that discussion we've had mm -hmm. is what do we need and, and mm -hmm. I guess when I look at it, I think that we need somebody in a position that's probably going to be both salaries combined is my view of it. But I understand that we physically need more help. Um, 
I, I mean, I appreciate the job description. I think it's good, but I, I think that overall, I, I struggle with with the with the description, with the assistance. I appreciate fire and um, police helping us out with that. So I guess based on that, I, even though I struggle with it, I understand that we need it. So I guess my comment is, uh, you know, I, I think that it's something that we need to revisit the position. I don't know where that puts us in terms of trying to move forward with that, but I, I do know that we need the help currently. I, I just struggle with the overall setup. I think that we need to look really hard at the IT because I think there's a lot of liability in there, there's a lot of risk assessment that we need to do, mm -hmm. as well as physical help with, you know, the daily tasks, and, and so I, I, you know, support it, but I think that it might mean that in another year or two we've really got to look at this and, and, and really redevelop that area, so. Janelle? Yeah, I agree with both of you. Um, I don't think that hiring somebody uh, with an associate's degree to be the help desk, desk specialist is the answer right now. I think we need to do a department assessment a little bit more in depth. Uh, Foster will be retiring uh, not too far into the future. Uh, does that mean his job description changes, though the new the person who takes over, because IT grows exponentially in their in their um, you know capacities. So how does that affect Foster's job description? I'm not sure when he was hired, but certainly IT has come a long way from that time. So I feel like adding another position is band-aiding something that isn't really stitched together properly at this point. So I would s uh, support delaying this and doing more of an assessment uh, over the next year. Don? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, not, not necessarily in any case of I told you so, but the city of Atlanta is actually rec reeling from uh, ransomware attack uh, on their system. So cities and municipalities are, are are right targets uh, for people because there's all sorts of data, and that's kind of what I was driving at. Uh, this doesn't solve that. Um, it, and I'm not trying to be cavalier about it, but even the uh, associate's degree part of this, I had kids in driver's ed who came out of a tech school who could have done almost everything in this job description when they were sophomores. Uh, mm -hmm. So a lot of this is off the shelf. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot of this stuff I do myself uh, for other people. Uh, it, it's like PC doctor and staples uh, kind of things. Uh, except for the integration of the software, which I am not entirely certain this gets us to. Uh, so given all of that, and given the fact that Michael's absolutely on target, I mean, uh, we're not looking at 60, we're really looking at about 80 when you're talking about total cost. I don't think this gets us anywhere near where we want to be, and I'm not going to support it. So, Chris, go ahead. Well, just, you know, I, I understand some of the concerns of the board, but if you listen to what you're saying, we need to do an assessment, we need to get a better sense for it, and we have one person. How do we get the assessment done? I think what this, what this plan, I mean, we, we can't do things without resources to get them done. And what this does is it takes a first step, and I would say that's a first step, to freeing up the IT director's time so they could start to look at some of the bigger picture and take off that person's plate some of the smaller items that he, he is doing now. When you have a one-person department, they do everything. Mm -hmm. So if the money is cut and not replaced by money to do an assessment or somebody to come in and, and help us to figure out what to, to do, I'm not sure where we're going. And, and just, you know, I, I, I've been digging in more. I dig in on different projects to try to get progress. And, you know, I have sat in on the meetings with a seller. Proprietary software, they don't open it up to everybody. The, uh, the uh, software for PK, for the assessing package, proprietary software, doesn't it open up to, to others? The uh, a seller piece, trying to match that up with people, GIS, you know, trying to get that so we can get the, as simple as identifying the 600 and plus uh, properties, they don't always communicate well with each other. But right now, we all go to the same one person for all these answers. 
and having one person for all these answers hasn't been getting it done and he can't get it done into the future. So something needs to be done moving forward. <coughs> this is the attempt to, to try to move us in the direction. Thank you, Chris. I mean, I'm just gonna throw my two cents in before Don goes. This is an $80,000 step. And it seems to me that we are, we are building a position that we're not sure we're going to need. And I appreciate um, Scott Tilsley from the Howard's Fire Department's um, work with Foster to give us a kind of report on this. Uh, one thing I asked for at the time was uh, an assessment of what the county can do for us. I also asked for a total of what we are spending on IT because water department has IT, police department has their own specialty IT, fire department has their own specialty IT, and we in the town of Arch inside here use specialty IT. So I don't have anything to vote on here. I don't have a, I don't have a this is going to save us what I see is this is going to create another position. And I do think that the board's, one of the board's goals was IT. Richard Waystack stood before us um, when we had this conversation and recommended that we have an IT, somebody come in and tell us what our IT needs are. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not a big fan of consultants doing reports like that, but I would like to see at least somebody come in and give us an idea of where the town weakens. And with that, I would support um, plugging a number into the budget for IT needs, not an IT position, I would, I would, I would say that plug in twenty thousand dollars to put the band-aid on this, while the town administrator and whomever else does an actual study. The report that we got back um, from Foster and, and Scott was had had a number of positions on there. What it didn't say was one person worked ten hours a week, one person worked fifteen hours a week, and one person worked twenty. They weren't full-time positions in those other towns. So I don't think we have a clear understanding of what exactly we're doing. And um, Janelle mentioned Foster's retirement. I, I, the only comment I'll make on that is, Chris, you told me that he's discussed it. And I think we need a full review of what our IT needs are before we put a position in place. So I would, I would support plugging 20000 in uh, and, and maybe giving a $5,000 stipend to the uh, community center, Caleb and Jamie, who are doing the website now, which they're doing an outstanding job on, but several people have wanted refreshers to that, so I, I recognize the need for web improvement, but if, uh, if anyone wants to comment on that, Larry? Uh, I like that approach. I don't, uh, I'm not sure that if we're going to do this, 20,000 is going to be enough to get a to get a review. I would like to give a little more leeway on that. Well, I don't want 20 for a review. 20 is no, the I know where you want to go, okay. but, but uh, I'm not sure that's going to get us there because that goes pretty fast. If you're looking at all the things you stated, you know, different departments doing different things, the software packages that Chris has stated, how do we put those together? I I, I would like to have a a little bigger number. I wouldn't want a shortcut in that and be in the same spot uh, some months from now without a legitimate review. So I'm thinking thirty or forty thousand. Julie, I agree because I think I think all of the points you just raised are real, but I do think it will be more pricey. I think we're probably looking at like forty. I just want to be sure it's done. Right, right, and have a good assessment done yeah. and a review, and and then we know where we stand and what we need, and then we can address that. You know. I'd like to see what the county offers uh, before plugging in a number at all, because maybe part of uh, their service is actually, you know, assessing and review. We can do the number. We don't have to spend it. Exactly. And Chris can come back to us. Yeah, and I do think that we need some funding if we're going to do something with the county. The county's not free, so mm -hmm. it's not like you're just right. backfilling with the, that resource. Don? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, in just listening to all this, it kind of feels like getting in a car, starting it up, and then driving around and trying to figure out wh where I'm going uh, without a map. Uh, <laughs> they do that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I try to avoid that. Uh, GPS. <laughs> <laughs> My point with this is this position is not going to get you the integration of the proprietary software. I mean, so that discussion is off the table. Uh, it may free up time yeah, to get you into uh, the discussion of the, the superior position, which would be uh, Foster's. I think uh, we're beyond that, but go ahead. To, to, get, to get you that. 
I still feel that Michael's right uh, with the number he's looking at because remember, we're not appropriating for the operating budget if we do that. We could pay for this as a one year thing out of free cash because it's not a continuing expense. And given that, uh, we should be looking at what our needs are, defining those needs, what would fill those needs, and how this should be structured for both positions. Uh, it, I, I just don't see that this job description, uh, except for a vague allusion to the proprietary software you're talking about, is anything other than just the standard commercial, you hook up machines and do you, you, have a, do you have a proposal on a slot number for extra services? I said 20. Larry said 30. Julie said 40. <laughs> well, <laughs> agreed with me. I heard 40 on both. I, yeah, no, I, I'm with 40. Julie really said 30 to 40. I'm I'm with 20 because our friends at the That's finance important. committee can always wind up Pretty augmenting well. that should the needs ar need arise. But 20 is a good starting point. Chief. Uh, it seems to be some real confusion here. Um, <laughs> uh, Scott was unable to be here tonight. Um, and I, I'm not going to begin to speak for Scott. I just can't. Or Foster. But you were given a report. You were asked uh, for a report. And you were given one. Mm -hmm. It seems that it's not answering your questions. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put it back on you. Specifically, uh, through the administrator, let us know what you want. What do you want for questions? What are you looking for needs? I, I, I was under the assumption that you were given a needs proposal. Uh, we do need to do something. We're just really, really fortunate right now that uh, I can, I, I will speak for, uh, for the police department and the fire department. We do have internal people, but we're just lucky. We're just lucky. So going forward, we need to do something. So I'm going to ask to you, Mr. Chairman, through the administrator, if you're confused, I want specific questions. I'm not confused and, at all. And how can we, how can we, well, there seems to be confusion. Well, so let's, let's answer your questions and so we can move forward, you know. So with, my, confu with my, my confusion is the report that we got. I want to know exactly what our IT needs are. I want to know exactly what we're spending on IT. And a help desk person doesn't get me there. So I read the report, I followed through on the report, looked at the towns that they said, found what those job descriptions were, and they weren't full-time jobs. They were 10 hours here, two hours there. So what I'm trying to do and what I'm suggesting we do is not put another $80,000 employee on and find out exactly what you all need and what you all are spending now put an IT number together and put an IT department together that makes sense. If we can have some clarity on what you're looking for, I, I understand what you're saying. I do. I want to make sure we give that to you so that you can have the information in front of all of you so you can look at it and say, yep, this is what we need to do. So, but in fairness to Scott, uh, I do want to make sure that he is directed clearly. And if, uh, if that wasn't done this time, I assure you it will be done the next time. But I know there may have been some confusion as to exactly what you're looking Chief, for. Chief, just so we're clear, Scott helped us. This isn't Scott's job. And we're here to help you. We'll do anything we this can to help This is the town you. administrator's job, and that's what we're asking the town. Scott did an outstanding job with the task that he was given. I'm saying that the plan that we got back doesn't answer the questions on what it costs us, what our needs are, what software packages that we need help on, what outside services we're still going to need. Because through all of this, I've still heard that you're still going to need outside services. Police is still going to need outside services. Water is still going to need outside services. So we're still going to have those expenses. And those are the questions that we want. If, if, if I, I will put it down in writing. I'm, I'm here to say we will help you in any way we can. So we can just get, you know, with true understanding and clarity so we can move forward. Gotcha. I, I don't want to have, I, I just, I, I want to make sure that we don't give you information that you don't need or understand. Well, and just Scott did an outstanding job. This is by no means a question of what him and Foster did. I think the board wants a little bit different approach. And we want to know what the town's needs are and what it's ultimately going to cost us. OK, so. we just need the mission, and we'll accomplish it. Gotcha. Mr. Chairman, Richard Waystack, uh, Council on Aging. And we're familiar because we've had a change in the director in the last year. And, and when the new director came in, looking at the infrastructure of her department, the computers that are there, the, the um, personnel that are in place, we have computers between the director and the executive assistant that don't talk to each other. You know, a lot of these are hardware issues. Mr. Clark mentioned uh, well that we're coming with a new software that will better serve the needs of this community. 
through the graciousness of the friends and finding some money in the budget to make that happen. Part of that, it's also proprietary software. Training will occur for the people on that particular software. Assessor's department has proprietary software. That was done to reduce personnel in that department. We dropped two people in order to bring that proprietary software into the town. That is the trend that's happening. But I, I think the point being is we were blessed by having a new director that we could look at the needs of the Council on Aging. Other departments need to do that. What are the particular needs? We have a lot of software, I mean hardware issues that need to be dealt with. And I think a department by department search of what are the issues there, how can they be done? Are they software? Are they hardware? Are they maintenance? What are the issues there? So I, I think an analysis, department by department, would go a great way to finding out what our needs are in the future. Thank you, I, Richard. I would only add, oh, excuse me, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I was gonna, I was gonna add what Richard said, that that's a level department by department. What I'm asking is we need a, a cross-reference too, a department to department to be sure they're communicating and they're using software, even though propriety are, are they are, some proprietary are also compatible. So I wanna be careful we're not just stopping at department by department, which is my point. Don. Thank you, Mr. Chair. W one would think that there, if, if you're talking about proprietary software, it typically comes with somebody who tells you how to use it because it's proprietary. Uh, so none of what I'm looking at here gets you to any of what we've been discussing because this is just a position that we're throwing in there saying I hope this will be a help. Uh, different uh, machines that are running different versions of Windows, uh, that are running computer software that doesn't necessarily, like Office, that's in different, uh, uh, different years, so they're not entirely compatible and, and certainly don't keep formatting. Uh, and it doesn't get you anything in terms of uh, getting software uh, beefing up for our uh, protection uh, for malware. And, uh, with that, uh, I, I would say that the 40 number probably is right because if it's funded out of free cash, we can get the money back again for anything we don't spend. So I'd make a, a motion that we supplant this in the uh, operating budget with a $40,000 uh, amount to address uh, both uh, IT needs uh, across departments and to address uh, near-term help. Is out of free cash. Is there a second on that? Yeah, I'll second it. Okay. Tui? So the only other question I have, I, I, I'm in support of that. The only other thing I don't want to see us do is to leave all the departments like we're currently in this situation with one person. It's That job is it's too much for one person to be able to yeah. meet all the needs that, that we're moving forward that we're discussing, doing the current position. So what do we do in the interim? Well, we a lot, and I agree, I, I would vote for that. Um, what do we do in the immediate point moving forward? We need to do something, I think, and I don't know how we go about that. Well, to Norm's point, we all put our ideas on paper and we come up with a mission statement and uh, through the town administrator, and the town administrator certainly should be involved in this, we start by reaching out to the county, we start by reaching out to the department heads and ask what their actual needs are, what their current Cost is, and then we put a plan together, and then we. Move well, forward. no, I see that as part of this. What I'm saying is, what do we do In right now? Time. What yeah, do we I, do to help? I think maybe to that point, in, in listening, I, I just don't want to maintain the status quo. I don't right. believe maintaining no, the status agreed. quo makes any sense. Mm -hmm. So, if we want to move forward, if we are able to do, yeah, and just for discussion purposes here, if we did forty thousand from free cash to to hire a consultant to come in and study our needs and how we would rebuild the department and potentially put 20000 into the operating budget so when the county comes I can at least contract with the county to do a day a week or get some additional support for the operation. I'd, okay. I'd be willing to incorporate that into the motion but I will but I just am adamantly opposed to hiring somebody just because we think we need something. So. That would, that's fine with me if somebody just wanted Dave. to. Dave? Just to make you aware too, some of the cuts that we made to make the money available for this position were from our IT resources. So the outside vendor money that we spend as well as overtime money that's used for that admin function. So so to, to your point, Julie, is that that in anticipation of a need, we also created a shortage on our end right. figuring that we were gonna get, you know, so, right. yeah, support that's the greater point. good. Right. So just so everybody's aware. 
Deputy Tom Gagnon. Uh, and just to go along with what Dave said, we have a uh, we had a meeting uh, when this was all going on uh, to try to come up with the proper solution for this IT need. The police department we contributed twenty thousand dollars. We took part of our record clerk money, our part-time record clerk, into that uh, with the hope that we would get some help. However, we also cut the money that was allotted for uh, Lieutenant Tilsley uh, to help us out. We are fortunate to have Detective Harris that helped us out as well. And we do have the outside contractor that helps us out tremendously, which we did cut some hours from, um, because we did want to come in as directed under the 2%, which we did do. The main thing that we have to look at right now, obviously, is what you're uh, discussing. We are 100% behind with what you're discussing, obviously. We will make it for the next months, fiscal year, whatever, on what we had planned uh, for the current finances. Uh, but if there is going to be some money available, we're hoping that when we do have this um, meeting, kumbaya meeting, whatever you want to call for us all to get together, <laughs> um, that a lot of our needs, because I think we have a pretty good priority here, we have people that are very smart, uh, will be taken into account. Now, we will have our services will go out without interruption right now and like that, uh, as long as we can maintain the current relationship that we have financially, where we do pay some of Lieutenant Tilsley's uh, overtime and like that. Uh, we can't cut anymore because we did cut. Mm -hmm. I just want to put right. that out there right now. Right. All right, so. Yeah. You know? Tom, I just have a question for you, um, since you're more well-versed in this than I, um, about your outside uh, IT person. Yes. Based on numbers that you pay that person or that company, whatever it is, what are your thoughts on the twenty versus thirty versus forty thousand dollars that has been proposed for this motion? We we don't have an actual contract, but we use uh, Cape Cod Networks. We have used them for well since we've been in the new building, pretty much. They charge us eighty-five dollars an hour, which is below market rate, uh, because we have been longtime friends, uh, whatever term you want to use. I honestly can't give you an answer whether twenty thousand, forty thousand. The gentleman that we use is by far the smartest person I've ever met with IT. He has offered his services to help us out. Uh, so that's not even an issue. When there was a position, he was like, boy, I'd like to come, maybe go for that. But he's like, no, because I have this position here. I understand what I do with your department. Mm -hmm. But anything I can do to help you folks, if you had a new IT person come in, I'll help train him. That's the type of person we're dealing with. So if you would like us to contact them just to say, what do you think for a cost? We'd be more than happy to do that. Tommy, just to follow up on that. Sure. If we hire a help desk person at $80,000 to the town, you're still calling Cape Cod Networks, correct? We will still need Cape Cod Networks. His level of expertise is far above yeah. anybody that yeah. we have in this and town. And I think we're getting beyond, I mean, I, I really think the board, you know, this is a new position. This is something brand new. And we're all looking again at a 7.2% increase in the budget. Mm -hmm. This might sting a little bit. It might sting a little bit for a year while we figure this out or a half a year while we figure this out. There's people that do uh, computer work right in the room. We have no idea. That report that we got gave us some idea, and we can expand off of that report until Chris makes the call. And we also have something called a reserve fund transfer. So if we spend our $40,000, which I hope we won't, they can go back, Chris can go back before the Finance Committee and say we're having a computer nightmare and we need to borrow some money from the reserve fund transfer. It's there. So. Why are we voting to put, why would we consider voting not to fill a position, but to put money into an operating budget instead of just doing a $40,000? We've done it without it. Mm. So it gives us time to plan, in my mind. So there is a motion on the table and a second. Yeah. So and it was 40000 It was $40,000. cash to actually look into the. And, and, and that would be used for help. That would be used. For an assessment, for board, assessment, to remind the board, we have a grant as yeah. well. Yeah. Foster got a grant. Mm -hmm. Is that thirty thousand mm -hmm. dollars? Uh, I think it's twenty thousand. So Foster got a grant for twenty thousand to study this already. So we're we're on our way for IT for risk assessment and to study our IT from the Commonwealth. That was the grant that I sent to. So motion and a second. Any other discussion on the motion and the second? Yes. Go ahead. Well, now I didn't know he had a twenty thousand dollar grant. I want to bring the money down to twenty thousand because at a hundred bucks an hour, that's two hundred hours. We don't have to spend it. Don't have to spend it. 
but we will. We can appropriate. We but we it. will. <laughs> we will spend it. If it's there, if, if we appropriate it, it will be spent. That's just the way it goes. So right? Am I right? The <laughs> grant is specifically only for a cyber risk assessment. Okay. It just, that's it good just though, does cyber that's risk only, it. and that's can I, uh, to be expended prior to the end of the fiscal year. So again, going back, we, we can say 40000 if we're going to allot a number, right? In the meantime, what we're also saying is if they've hit a, a point where they're saying we need other help, right? We're, we're saying, okay, they, we're working on the forty grand now with the assessment because I'm talking assessment. And if they need help, then I'm saying then we're all agreeing that another 20000 at least would be allotted if we had – issues where we had to address it there because they're telling us they've given pieces of their budget to right. help with this just and that's what I want to make sure we address well, I think just a correction the, the 40,000 is, is not intended just for an assessment the 40,000 is working money if they need help we can hire someone to help them we're also going to start an assessment process mm -hmm. and we have some money already put in a grant for that and we can use some of the 40,000 for that we can use Lieutenant Tilsley for some of that. We can use Foster. We can use the county. So that 40000 is if Tommy needs help and he gave the money away out of his budget, he can call Chris and say, I need to hire Cape Cod Networks to come in and do the work, and we'll pay them out of the 40000 if they've already expended that money out of their budget. So the 40000 is for them, for the town to use, and we are going to work on the assessment. Is that what the motion said? Yep. Thank you, Donna. Go ahead. <laughs> and, and Mr. Chair, I got to point out with the dynamic of government, this is the basement. If you if you hire this person, you're not unhiring them. And if you hire them at 60 uh, with cost of living and steps, it's going up. I don't have any w questions without, on that. W without any kind no, of we're plan. Not talking that, about we don't, that. I don't have any issue with so any If we spend the 40, <laughs> we can always go for a reserve fund. Angelo will give us the extra happens. money. <laughs> <laughs> so with that. Can I, any more discussion on the 40,000? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's what's out of operation. Thank you. So, Chris, the budget will be reduced in the health insurance number and the $62,000 request, and then yeah, the 40 will be plugged in. We didn't specifically put in money on the health insurance. We were just going to include that in any normal changes that we have. So I didn't build that in. I don't believe we built in a specific additional plus one, or did we? That's why we have a staff. We if we were hiring yeah. somebody, I would we'll, assume we'll, we were planning we'll, on planning yeah, health we, insurance. She, she, so she, I'd she like to reduce it. Did. So we'll cut the we'll cut the plus one on the. Um, okay. okay, back to the now to the ninety thousand dollar request to build the fund for future um, operate, operations and maintenance with Chatham. Larry, we've talked about this for some time to build a uh, uh, to start putting money away for that. Uh, my only uh, comments before and, and, and concern was is that the uh, the article itself was somewhat broad. It was not just uh, to help offset the charge, and and that made me uncomfortable. So, I'd, and I guess it's written you can't take out because I think you had four different items you could spend the money on rather than just offset the uh, sewer charge. And uh, if we could modify that, I'd be a lot happier with it. But we we need to move ahead with that so we get a baseline going forward. And Chris, uh, we can't modify that article at this point to be more specific on the expenditures of that. Is that what's going on? Well, I, I think the I intent. I have the article right in front of me, but I, I think the intent behind it, and I know that the uh, support committee uh, had had some discussions on this. The intent was said we we need to build up that money so we can have it so it would fall to become retained earnings. Right. I just don't want to be, be diverted to. Uh, uh, whatever, and not spent for that specific purpose. Right. It, I think the intent behind it would be to have uh, sixty thousand uh, or sixty to seventy thousand, kind of intentionally go back that we know would go into retained earnings, and we can call that um, intergovernmental transfer at, at a later date. That number will become a real number when we deal with uh, Chatham, and then to take the twenty thousand, which I believe I took twenty thousand out of the administration budget that we've used for CDM to help uh, with our portion of the Dennis Harwich and Yarmouth initiative, and with um, helping to put together material education materials for, so that twenty thousand would stay in there. 
as that process is no longer needed, once we get to agreement, then that also can fall to retained earnings. So we would be building that fund up to, to cover the cost of what we would have to pay to Chatham. So the intent is, and we could certainly do a design a budget out, that 20000 would go for the consulting services that we have been using in administration, and the balance, the 70000 yep. would go into building that fund for I, intergovernmental Whatever we decide, I want assurance that that's going to stay there to help offset the cost coming in three years' time from now. Yeah, that's I wouldn't, my, that's I my, wouldn't that's propose my it if we weren't going to intend to do it for that purpose. Do it. Yeah, no, I agree. We, we need to stop putting this money away. And again, I share your thoughts, but, you know, in terms of earmarking that money, um, it sounds that Chris intends to do that. That's what I would want to make sure, yeah. that that money is going annually into that particular fund for, for sewer. Yeah. So. You know. I support this. No. Up in there. Um, now, it seems to be, Larry, and I don't have the article in front of me, confusion on the language of the article. Chris's intent is one thing, but the article says another. Is that what you're saying? Well, the article is probably stated. I don't think we have a detailed budget. It's, it's, uh, it, it gives like four different categories, and that was my concern. I have it in front of me right now. And I just, I, I, I would rather it be more specific than that, either in the article or in a budget that's attached to it so we know what it's going to. So, Chris, if this is voted, you'll put a budget together showing that. I don't know. What's your article Your mark. Article number 16, Sewer Enterprise. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to add to the explanation that under the explanation that 20000 would be committed so, for yeah. uh, consulting services and then 70000 would be committed for um, intergovernmental transfer. Because I do that in front of me now to cover cost of operation debt, capital, and other operation maintenance costs of a sewer utility, mm -hmm. which, which my mind is, is overly broad from what I would yeah, like to be I, I think part of that is we're adopting the sewer enterprise fund, like in the water enterprise fund. Yeah. As this matures and becomes fully operational, we will use it for all aspects, which is O&M and capital and debt. So that's why that it just mirrors the 40, uh, 53 F and a half. I, I like can put in the I can live with it if you put a, uh, a budget in there for this. Yeah. I just, it's okay. I'll add it to the explanation. Okay. Chris, I, I got I to gotta ask, what, what are we at with consulting services right now with CDM Smith? And I would assume that, that this is a continuation of that. So if we build the sewer enterprise fund, I'm not in favor of 20000 going anywhere for marketing. Well, it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be marketing, Mr. Chairman. Um, I think that if town meeting votes to fund the sewer project, now we're just going into construction for the southern section of Pleasant Bay. But we were at a meeting the other day. We have obviously a grant to help us pursue, and there is matching funds that are supposed to be part of that grant. So we do have to have some resources available to have CDM uh, assist in getting the Dennis Harwich and Yarmouth initiative finalized. So it would be more for that element that I would envision. And anything else that comes up, we have had governance questions that are on the warrant. So there are additional questions that emerge. So you're removing, for the past three years, you've had a $20,000 line item for wastewater. In administration. You're that's removing been taken that. out and put into this. Okay. Okay. Don? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I I'm a little confused because I was the one who was advocating to, to fund this. Uh, and it really, what I understood was happening is we were putting free cash into this, understanding that there'd be no receipts uh, early on, and that we'd have to vote to disperse. Uh, I wasn't expecting that there was a, a, a finite cost that was being taken out of uh, the operating budget and uh, anticipating to be taken from this. It has to come out of the operating budget if we intend on subsidizing it on an annual basis, which we do. I'm, ta I'm talking about time. establishing a start point for uh, uh, this enterprise fund, uh, which needs to be funded because it, it will not have revenue coming in to fund it. but. I, I did not understand that we were going to be spending anything out of it near term. We were just going to be starting to build it. Dana? Uh, the Finance Committee voted to raise and appropriate this money uh, out of taxes rather than free cash. For that reason, we wanted to continue on. 
Don? I'm still where I was. We've got an ungodly amount of free cash, and this would be a one-time hit that would start to develop a, a growth in this. If we wanted to raise an appropriate, I mean, we're never going to get to the figure that we were talking about if we keep letting stuff stay in to raise an appropriate out of the budget. Chris? This is, we, we've signed an IMA with Chatham that we have signed up for a $250,000, $270,000 obligation that will hit, it's not if, it will hit on, you know, in FY22. If we don't start to build up and be able to sustain that. That's not a one-time charge. That is the beginning of the sewer program in the beginning. Uh, Chatham has done operating budget um, subsidies to their sewer fund for 15 to 20 years. That's what we have to build or else we will create a crisis point in three years from now if we don't have it. We would build up the fund, but then we would draw it down because if it's funded by free cash, so it has to be built into the operating budget and to be sustainable. And that gets exactly to uh, my point. I, I was hoping, and I, that's why I keep raising these, is that we had a very simple article so that we're going to put this fund for that purpose, that we'd have money available when we hook up to Chatham and start paying off these operational expenses. And I, in the article stated now, it muddies up my mind because you have a three or four different, different uses of that. I'd rather have this article be uh, be clean, and I get your purpose of the other money and have that show up somewhere else. Chris, thoughts on that? My thought on that is exactly the same as Larry's. This, I have no problem doing an enterprise fund for wastewater. We know it right. needs to come. It's fiscally responsible. The open-ended $20,000 seems to me that that should be either somewhere else in your budget or gone completely. So the 20000 you took out of the operating budget that got us to this point and put into this to use if we have to use. Right. I understand your use intent. Use if we have to use, right. But when we go to the voters, building this fund for wastewater that we know we're going to have to pay is fiscally responsible. And I would, Larry, vote to lower the amount to the $70,000 number to a 70000 not include the twenty, And put the twenty back and into And plug the twenty in someplace else so that we're telling the public exactly where it's going to be. That's why I was confused. But I just, if we're adopting a fund and there's four purposes for the use of that fund, in the explanation, I, that's fine, I, I'll do that. We'll say 70000 will be for intergovernmental transfers that we have to build up because we know a bill is coming from Chatham. Yeah. You comfortable with that? I'm comfortable with that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. As long as you identify, Chris, that a that certain amount is for that, and then the other piece is if we need consulting services. Right. Okay, so I will yeah, move okay. that into administration, 20000 into administration, leave 70000 yeah. in there, and call it an intergovernmental transfer. Right. Okay, can I get a motion on that? Uh, <laughs> so move. move that <laughs> can I get a second? Second. Any discussion? On what? <laughs> you want to make the motion? <laughs> Who was the second? I didn't. Julie. I Julie. Julie, sorry. It's to change it to seventy thousand. It's to change it to seventy thousand dollars for inter. Uh, but it's also to move the twenty thousand back. Move the twenty thousand back, back, back in the operations funds. Seventy. And, 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 and to ex accept the figure. Okay. Any other discussion? No. We're good. Chris, you're good. I'm good. I okay. understand. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So now to the budget itself. Um, I just have like a, I need to take a yeah. bathroom break. Do we have two minutes? Yeah, or? two minute recess. Okay. We might be here when you come back. <laughs> They're going to insert a commercial in this segment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You could just stand up and entertain us. That would actually make people turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> Finance Committee could probably join us on this one. Jack, if you guys want to join us on this one, that's fine. We'll vote it, and then you then you guys can chime in. But
go ahead. It's empty. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've adjusted my goals to halftime. <laughs> <laughs> Not to do that. Why well, did it? Who did? I did. I guess I did a good job last night. So you can. Everything you can. Oh yeah, I'll this one. Oh, sure. I'm off the road. We have questions on this bike in here. It looks sad about this question. These questions about any sort of configuration. Capital problem. Don't we have, um, yeah, set, Jamie. It's swamping everything. Okay, back to the uh, budget. Sorry about that. Budget in the whole. Chris, I have a couple questions. I'll, I'll start with um, your five-year plan that you gave us. Uh, I don't have a date on it. Five-year financial plan for the town of Harwich, 2018 to 2022, showed for FY19 a $63,303,000 budget, and we're at around $65,000,000. My guess is that that changes the five-year plan for 2020, 21, and 22. The 2019 plan shows a $1 million deficit, which I think I alluded tonight that we, we changed some fees and, and, and things went up. For 2020, it shows a $2 million deficit. How, do we, how are we going to keep up with this is my first question. So, Mr. Chairman, when I did that presentation back in September, and, and I've been doing budgeting for a long time, when you, when you do those projections and you have to factor <gasps> in certain elements that are unknown, uh, I'm trying, I don't remember the exact number we used, but as a, for instance, health insurance. I, I think we factored in 15% in health insurance for a fairly big line item. And, you know, the reliability of uh, being able to accomplish uh, the budget from year to year is really when you start to refine. So that 15% went from 15% down to 4%, which what the net impact was for us for this year. So those numbers do get adjusted uh, as you go. Some of the other elements are when debt exclusions get approved, then that is a dollar for dollar. So the taxes go up to offset the debt that goes up. So that $2.1 million that I alluded to earlier, for what debt went up, the tax obligation also went up by $2.1 million. So, you know, I, I, I know I said it, that, you know, one year of a five-year projection is probably fairly reasonable number. Once you start going beyond that, all bets are off. So I think every year that I've been here, we have shown a small deficit or a bigger deficit for the first year and then the out years. I think this year was the first year that the first and second year were actually fairly consistent. And the out years, once you start doing, when you, when you bring in revenue of 3% and you have expenditures in some areas that are 15%, you're going to get a deficit. That deficit doesn't always materialize because you have those elements in the budget that get refined. So now that base on health insurance would be refined back down to 4% and we'll have to look at, that's part of the reason why I'm on that Cape Cod Municipal Health Group is to kind of really be at the forefront of what we're looking at for health insurance and how can we do things to help ourselves to try to decrease that number, such as the high deductible. So when you look at, at least when I look at a five-year projection, I'm really focused on that first year because the out years are really a product of math that may or may not, most likely may not come to fruition. Thank you. Um, given that, Chris, the, the looking, at, looking at individual budgets for the last few years, pick 2017, 2018, certain departments had givebacks that I think, I believe, goes into free cash mm -hmm, at the end of the mm -hmm, year. Mm -hmm. 
If those departments had give backs for 2017 and 2018, why was the budget adjusted in the spirit of the Board of Selectmen's message? Why was that adjusted upwards again based on the high number? And what message was given to the department heads that said to go, the ones that didn't, to get to the 2% and stop? And, and for the, us, the, our message was basically to put the brakes on. So if they're giving back money from eight, 17 and 18, why was the, why are the budget increases based on 18 numbers? <coughs> Yeah, I, I think to the to the question, uh, what you will see, and I think a good example of this <coughs> is uh, two examples: police department and the library. Police department and library had a uh, fairly high turnover in one year, so the number that came in for actual use was very low because people retired. We filled positions at a lower level, so the percentage. I think one year the police department was at zero. But then once you have kind of full staffing, if no one leaves or you have more consistent staffing and then you have a few people that are on IOD or, or things of that nature and your overtime costs go up, that's going to drive your budget. So a budget in, in the library had, uh, I think their average was about 5% and they had so many people that were in the steps that you can't do a 2%, and, and let's just use the library for instance, if you have half the workforce that are in the steps, so now you have a contractual obligation for the 2%, you also have the contractual obligation to make people eligible to be in the steps. So if you wanted to accomplish a 2%, then you would accomplish a 2% by taking the 5% and then cutting personnel because ultimately that's what drives the budget, personnel, to get back down to a, a 2% range. And the two things I did is I prepared a budget that I was very clear that I was going to try to preserve the rank and file and not do reductions, and that I attached your budget message that if the target overall of 2% could be achieved, let's try to achieve it. When you take out those two elements that we just talked about, we are now, for total budget, excluding some of those factors, the debt and, and health insurance and so on, we were at under, well, within the 2%. We were under 3% in the overall budget. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate that. The, the, the 1.6 million that we're spending out of free cash, and in some case, clearly budgetary items, I think throws that number off. But I guess my question to you as the administrator is how do we, how do we, continue this growth and and with the you know the school is using 700,000 in E&D this year next year if they decide not to use their excess and deficiency um, how, how do we sustain this how do we sustain a budget that goes up by this percent every year and continues to go up and we can't raise fees anymore well again I think that you know, I think this is my 11th or 12th budget that I've prepared that has not needed to have an override. And the way you do that is by keeping your costs, particularly labor costs, in that 2 to 2.5% two range and recognizing that you have a real need to keep, well, a real need that your revenues won't be 2%. A 2% revenue increase is technically an underride. It's technically below Proposition Two and a Half. That's true. So when you do, well, when you do the budget according to Proposition Two and a Half, you're entitled to do the full Two and a Half, and you're entitled to do new growth, which brings you in the three to three and a half percent range. So when you have labor contracts that are at two and a half or three percent, and you factor in the the steps that people get plus the two percent cola and your revenue is coming in at three and a half, you're able to sustain those increases in health insurance and things of that nature. So it's doable. I'm more than happy to have the conversation with you. Like, If you want, if the board wants, now I've, th this has been a board that has said to me, keep it at two and a half, but look at additional positions. So the board has given me kind of mixed messages. And what I've tried to do to not have mixed messages 
if you want, and I've offered this, you know what, as a professional public administrator, if you say to me, we want an underride every year, we want to build a sustainable level, then what we need to do <coughs> is we need to take the whatever, the 175 people that are employed and decide that we're going to go down to 150. Pick a number that's going to make it so we don't need that full 3.5% in order to function and that we can sustain ourselves with a 2% level. Thank you, Chris. Uh, just on that, I, I love that. I love that we got to lay people off thing. It, it, it's really where everybody goes immediately. There's this thing called zero-based budgeting, and it was, yeah. in our, it was in our budget, and I'm going to be on the board next year. So yeah. we were leading into a 2% this year and asking for a 0% budget. 0% budget, which I know you know what it is, is start at the bottom and work up based on needs. And I'm going to make it perfectly clear. This board has never said to lay anyone off. And that's not the goal of this board. We haven't said that. But in any budgeting, there is money. We're, f we're putting $70,000 into a future fund this year to be physically responsible. There's money in every budget, and it's not layoffs. Um, and I, you know, again, I understand what you've done, and I understand why you did it. My question remains the same. How do we sustain this kind of budget growth every year? Because we cannot, this town can't afford, and, and throwing back out to the Council on Aging numbers, 50% of the people in this town are 60 and over. They don't use the school their grandkids might. They don't use a lot of the services. They use the Council on Aging. And we've all heard what, what they're going to ask us for next year. And I don't know how we continue to go back to people, whether it's 3% growth plus the 25 that gets us to that, you know, the other number we're plugging in here is the free cash. We seem to be managing between 1.5 and 3 million in free cash. Mm -hmm. And that every year our budget still goes up 3 to 4 million dollars. And that's the trend. And at some point, it was in our budget message, we thought about it. And the police, I just uh, looked at your number, thank you for coming in at that number. But we are also, Tay, and the fire department I already gave credit to, we are also spending a lot of free cash on, on capital items for the town a revolving capital fund, and I think we as a board and the finance committee really needs to put our head together with the school and figure out how we're not going to deliver this next year. An alarming number to me, Chris, is the 86% or 82% on the, on the debt, and that was based on what we voted last year, which was $12 million, I believe. This year we're asking for $30 million. What's next year's budget going to be with that debt, if that debt gets passed? Don, start with you. Once we get through the board, we'll vote the budget, and then finance committee will talk about our differences. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I mean, even the free cash expenditure, uh, we've had significant discussion about uh, uh, bond rating. Uh, if we and we have talked about uh, getting a more robust uh, reserve fund. Uh, uh, this could wind up fueling if we didn't spend it on uh, things that weren't urgently needed, which is going to have an effect ultimately by the taxpayers because we, just a, a tenth of a point uh, on interest rates, everybody pays the, the bond uh, right. that they've agreed that they were willing to borrow against. Uh, so the better the rating, uh, the more bang for the buck we get. And, we don't have to take free cash and spend it down. And in addition to the obvious thoughts you had about uh, the operating budget itself, uh, so I, we have to do w what we can. I mean, uh, it's a start this year. Maybe next year we do this, uh, the same kind of analysis, but we do have to understand that they don't get five tax bills. It's not a, they don't get a, a school tax bill and uh, a project tax bill and an operations tax bill, people get a tax bill and it's burgeoning. It's going way up uh, pretty fast. And there are no, of those people over 60 years old, and I keep reminding everybody this, but it's still the case, there's an awful lot of those people who grew up here who didn't amass a lot of wealth in terms of uh, cash. They may, have, they may be sitting on property, uh, but those people 
are, are finding it real tough over 60 to try to figure out when they were younger they could go out and work two or three jobs, you know, both the husband and the wife. Uh, they're at the point now where they're getting squeezed. It's a significant uh, amount of money and I'm really not of the mind to tell them, well, there's no room here for you anymore because it's gotten too outsized for you and you should think about moving. Uh, it's not fair to the people who made this town what it is. Janelle? Well said. Um, I just have one comment, Chris, in particular, just going through uh, the budget and going through just today's packet, um, and it has to do with DPW. I was, I'm just astounded at how much uh, money has been spent on the salaries and wages of overtime for the snow removal as well as the hired equipment. Now, um, I know hired equipment is outside laborers, mm -hmm. like plowers and whatnot. So we've got 88, almost 88,700 for that, and then we've got 104,500 for the overtime. So that's almost $200,000. And I, that's just astounding to me when I know that police and fire, you know, when they came to us for new positions, one of their reasonings was, you know, we're paying too much in overtime. So why can't we look at that with DPW? I mean, I know it was a snowy winter, but that's, I mean, with DPW, I, I think some of the starting salaries are around $50,000. That's four positions right there. And I've also talked about um, having DPW have a seven day work week because I'd say 70% of the storms that happened this winter were on Fridays. So we had to pay the overtime because we're not open. You know. So that's just one of my thoughts and of uh, somehow to save a little bit of something. Well, just, just on that, uh, number one, you know, since I've been in administration, I hate snow. Okay. I hate <laughs> snow because you spend money for 24 hours worth of value. But you know we're also in the public service business, and we have to make sure that if someone has a heart attack or someone needs us, we're able to get there. So the vehicles go out. There's not much we can do about when it snows. You know, to be perfectly honest, if you look really, what we get hit on, $172,000, almost it's almost half the, the total amount was on material. So when you have 200 and I guess 225 miles of public and private roads that we are responsible for plowing and salting, it takes a lot of material. This is over the course of the entire winter too. This isn't one storm. Uh, no, I understand that, but it's just a lot. Two hundred thousand dollars for uh, hired plowers as well as the overtime paid to our regular. I think part of uh, Lincoln does do, a, I think, a nice job that he uses his own resources in-house, so we try to do it in-house first, and when he's unable to keep up with the snow is when he calls in the private plow. So, you know, it really is designed to make sure people can get to where they need to be. And when it snows, we need to clear, and if we have a snowstorm that has 36 hours of duration, we can't expect our guys to sustain that level of effort for that period of time. I think my point is the seven day work week, because that's, that's equivalent, let's say approximately four positions, you know? That's just, I, it's something I would like to see looked at. And uh, this was brought up originally when we were talking about um, having the community center open on Sundays uh, when I was researching about custodial staff. Mm -hmm. So it's just something I think would behoove the town to um, to research and, and figure out because I think DPW is really a public safety you know department not just mm -hmm. transfer station I think it is synonymous with police and fire in that respect and I think a seven-day work week is really important for that department you know staggered obviously right thank Something you we could look at I guess Thanks. Julie so I understand the, the message that we gave and I, I obviously would like to adhere to it, but I also think we have to be careful to oversimplify because we're talking about um, major dollars that we're willing and we've all agreed on spending on our infrastructure. And that costs us money. And we're talking about a harbor project that will overall probably bring us more money. We're talking about sewers, and, and that's a long-term debt, 40 years. You know, we're, we're not alone in that. And, <laughs> and the alternative is that we'd be sued, so we know we have to do it. So these are painful decisions, and they hurt the taxpayers, which is every one of us. But there's hopefully a long-term 
gain to it in the end. And, and overall, we have to bite the bullet. We heard from Yarmouth they wish they sewered back in the 80s because of the money they would have saved. So we understand that this is money we have to spend. I think that um, it's true. We have probably given a, mif a mixed message in the sense that we're saying we want this, but we don't want to continue to lose our employees to various towns because they're getting more money. So we're saying, but we want to keep our employees and we want to make sure that we're giving proper raises and all of that. So, so that factors in to some of these you know, increases. And never mind that we all know that it's really difficult in terms of health insurance. We're all struggling with health insurance costs, whether you, you're you know, privately employed, whether you're working for the town, everybody's struggling with how to manage those costs. So I think it's difficult to come up with a specific number and say, there, I got it right. I also think that, to your point about an aging population, we have an aging population. And at the same time, we all understand the need to get younger people to be able to stay here, whether they've grown up here or they want to come here and live here. So we can't oversimplify a really difficult problem that we're all having. And I get the budget, the budget message, but we also have to figure that there are going to be increased costs, and some of those extend beyond, you know, employment, uh, cost of living increases, et cetera. We also have people who are in positions that are, you know, the police have educational steps. They have different trainings that they go, and every time th those numbers go up too. So, you know, overall, we're, we're in a difficult spot because we want to maintain good employees. We want our employees to stay. We need to invest in our infrastructure. So overall, I think that, you know, some of this is on us in the sense that we've given a mixed message. Or we, we've also asked for an added position of technology and just had another discussion about that. And if anything, I think we agree that we probably need to put more money into that position to get what we want eventually. So I think that there's multiple balls in the air. And, you know, granted, we want to make sure they land so that people can you know, maintain their lifestyle, stay here in town, and we can bring more people in, but I think it's a long-term discussion. Okay. Yep. Larry? I don't have a lot to add to that, actually. Everyone's made good points. Mm -hmm. I think we've, what we're trying to say is, is that we need to be, uh, we need to do what we can do. We, no one's talking about laying people off, Chris. Yeah. I agree with that. What we're talking about are the, are the ways we can be, uh, make better decisions sometimes. Maybe we can't do everything that, we can't afford to do everything that people ask. I think that's why the discussion on IT has been so drawn out tonight, is that that's one area that we might use as a labor-saving device to save money, and we have to be careful on that. And so we're going to continue to send these messages because Michael's got a point. You know, people still have to pay taxes, so there's no free free lunch. We have to be really careful with where, where the money we spend and move forward. So I'll leave it there. Making a motion on the budget. I would uh, make him. I would be happy to do so, but I'd like to know what the final number is because we changed the night. The, we changed the IT from uh, down to forty thousand. Yeah, what I would like to do is number you here. use the number that we have, less the IT person, less the health insurance adjustment, and plus the twenty thousand for the consultant coming and, back and in. That for number the three, adjustment. Is that number three three seven million forty five eight eight eight? I've, I've written that down for some. Someone gave that, that, I think. I have this yeah, 3770741. So if we could say 37,070,741, less, less the IT position, okay. less um, the money for one additional hire for health insurance, and plus the 20,000 to put back into administration for the contract services related to wastewater. Okay, so with perfect. those three adjustments, let me see my the other one. The it's 40, did you add the 40 for the uh, IT? The 40 from, uh, would be from, uh, yeah, actually I would fund that in the IT department and we would fund that out of free cash. We would use that as small capital. Thank you. Okay, 40. 40. So I would, I would move that we approve the budget of 37 million, 07, 0741, less uh, the calculated number for the IT position, less the health uh, care costs uh, associated with that position, and plus a twenty thousand uh, dollar figure uh, for IT expenses. Second. Okay. Well, wait a minute, um, and then twenty thousand back into administration. Yeah. 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 
Okay. He didn't say back administration meetings, but he said for the IT position. And what you turned away from is why I couldn't hear you. So there's four things, IT, healthcare, 20,000 in administration, and then 40,000 for the IT from free cash. No, I don't hold them. That was it. Okay, moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Thank Chris. you. <coughs> All right. Joint uh, budget article hearing with finance committee. Uh, welcome. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, thanks for staying so late. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I uh, uh, would note so that, that the FinCom does have a quorum and we'll declare the meeting started. Okay. And so you heard about all of our talk tonight. Holy so I'm going to let you respond. <laughs> Chris, is there anything that well, we're at? Yeah, at I was going to say maybe not to short circuit because obviously the discussion is important. But I, I think going through the list, I mean, I think that the the point in the charter is to have reconciliation where there's disagreement. I mean, as I tally it up, I mean, with the exception of the budget being a little bit of a different number than than what you guys voted, but you even voted pending additional information prior to town meeting. I don't know. I don't think I see any differences. Except for Angelo. Oh, I'd like to recognize <laughs> Angelo is the newest member for FinCom. Yeah. Welcome. Oh. Flew in from Florida just for this meeting. <laughs> Article 27, we have a difference. Yeah. Dana, tell us what Article 27 oh, is. Oh, thank you, Dana. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I miss do my cemetery job. rules and regs. <laughs> cemetery. <laughs> cemetery rules and regulations. Right. Uh, finance when we voted, you can definitely postpone that. Okay. We did not. We ask you to change your position. Okay. <laughs> and there. Tell, ask, tell, us <laughs> tell us why, Dana. Uh, we just, uh, if you read the part they want to change, all Christmas de decorations must be removed by January 31st. Anything left on the grave will be removed by the cemetery personnel. Items left at or on the lots after burial will be removed after one week. The above rules will be strictly enforced. We just think in a place where you're laid to rest for eternity, breaking the grievance problem into one-week increments is just not the way to go. It doesn't sound like Howitzer. It doesn't sound like a thing we do. Cemetery Commission has tried to put in rules in the past, and they've been regularly voted down at town meeting, and uh, we just want to keep that trend going on this particular case. It just seems like a very uh, set, an, it's set, a, it's set, a set of rules that was, it was made for the um, – people keeping track of the cemetery, not the people who go in there and grieve their, their loved ones. That's the gist of our discussion. Thank you, Dana. It didn't seem culturally consistent with the town's overall thinking and behaviors. So. We'd ask you to rethink it. <coughs> Board? <laughs> Does anyone want to rethink their position? Larry? Uh, yes. <laughs> Julie? I'd like some flowers hanging around longer than a week if I was in there. <laughs> Chanel? <laughs> Seems reasonable, yeah. Don? A more liberal use of the word may would have been better. <laughs> shall. You shall. No, may. All right. Can Rip I get a motion? We need a, we need a motion to reconsider. I, I, I move, move that we reconsider our previous vote. Second. Okay. Moved and seconded to reconsider our previous vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I just wanted to ask another question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Dana, is there anything else in that? That's what it is. That's it? That's it. Well, the change of ad change of address. They changed the address of their office. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't They'll need still fall with the mail, I assume. It was down at DPW. <laughs> now they're at the community center. So okay. So that, that vote's taken. Can I get a positive motion on this article? Uh, I we move that we indefinitely postpone. Yeah, I move that we indefinitely postpone that article. Second. Moved and seconded to indefinitely postpone Article 27. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 We have reconciled, Mr. Chair. <laughs> Excellent. However, <laughs> Jack, do you have anything? Uh, I think there are a couple, a couple points that, that um, we need to think about in the future. One is the whole topic of overtime. There's about a million dollars in overtime. Hmm. I would say a lot of it is. Dana is corrected you and said two million in overtime. Well, <laughs> he exaggerates. Okay. <laughs> I think there's a lot of reasons why you, you got to have overtime. And uh, a lot of good decisions get made, and so on. And but the the reality is, that it, as a total, it's very, very high, in my judgment and others' judgment. And uh, the trends have seemed more or less continued. 
you're going to go through blip where there's a lot of folks that have to work because of other people's training and other people's injuries and other people's vacations and so on. But over time, you ought to be able to find a way for some of that to be reduced, some of that over time. So I think the selectmen should sit down and talk about a policy around overtime management and what are the appropriate ranges. Uh, obviously, one department may look very different than another in terms of overtime as a matter of practice and appropriately. And others, you know, may not be the same. And that's okay. But I think some leadership on this topic for you guys would be useful. Um, Thank you for passing that Otherwise, you're on. using a piecemeal. Okay. Um, I think the whole issue of vehicles and uh, trying to decide which vehicle is needed, which one isn't, as the people sitting up here, that's, uh, you, can, you can just do a fiat answer, which is there will be no new vehicles this year or there will be three and that's that. But at the end of the day, you don't want to manage like that. You can't, you can't really tell some particular job person you don't need that truck, okay? Because you're not driving those trucks. You're not working those trucks. You're not trying to figure out what's in the neck of that truck. So I think you need to have a better policy level discussion and not designing what the fleet ought to look like in this room. You can't, you can't win that one, I don't think. Okay. Um, the other thing, and, and it, there's a lot of, took a lot of discussion to get to the point where you ended up around the IT thing and the IT needs and all that, and Chief Clark made a suggestion that if you can work with them and tell them how to get things, how you want things in terms of the, the statement of need, um, but again, there was a lot of designing on the fly, and at the same time, the big struggle, I think, is what is it we need in terms of IT resources to do what kind of IT work so that the town can move ahead, all right? Now, I, don't, I think that there's a lot of meat there that you guys might be able to provide some light on if you do it. Um, and the, on the IT thing, the, you know, there's, I, I, I went to what is the staffing strategy and at what levels of staff is that strategy going to need as well as what other things does the staffing area need, okay? Mike has said twice in the last two meetings I've attended, we're not talking layoffs here. I believe him, absolutely believe him. We haven't talked about it yet. We haven't talked about it yet. We, we kind of go around the edges. You guys do. But the rea no, never. <laughs> but the reality is there's more ways to deal with, with staff re reduction over time through attrition. That is a much healthier way to do it than not talking about staffing or reductions. Okay? I think that staffing strategy and plans has gotten increasingly important as, as the numbers have gradually continued to creep up. All right? And I think that's an area that's another... Well, policy and strategy, they need to support each other. Thank you, John. Thank you. And I would look for recommendations from the Finance Committee, since the Finance Committee is going through the budget. If you decide to do that, we uh, will. So I would look for recommendations from you. As far as vehicles go, my point is simple. We need to say no. And I've said that before, and I'll say it again. <laughs> that it may not, be, may not be up to us, but if we have vehicle maintenance <coughs> plans and vehicle plans, and we're getting rid of a vehicle with 100,000 miles on it with no explanation, in the budget, then that certainly is a call for the Board of Selectmen. I think that Mike, Michael, <laughs> Michael what's been bad. going on, <laughs> I think the reality is the $22 million uh, wastewater debt thing is swamping everything else. And the reality is if you start trying to respond to that by cutting here and cutting there, you're kicking the can a little bit down the road, as they say. And the reality is you can't cut fast enough to make those kind of huge costs not be a problem. And I, you know, I don't think that we can have a situation where we'll cut a truck and we'll cut a truck and we'll cut a truck and we'll do this and we'll do that when the reality is the biggest problem is the wastewater project and the fact that 80 some percent of our budget is health, wages and benefits. So, you know. I appreciate that, Jack. Um, waste, wastewater certainly is a, uh, a big thing for the town. 
but a $44 million budget nine years ago to a $65 million budget this year, along with all the debt exclusions and everything else, is also a big deal. Yes, it is, Mike. So, thank you. Uh, anything else? Board? All set? Anything else? All set? Thank mm -hmm. you. Is that it? Thank you. Meeting adjourned. <coughs> thank our, you. Our meeting. Chris, uh, we have we annual town that. meeting warrant one-liners. <laughs> I don't think we need any work on that at all, right? No, just uh, so the board's aware, we will be populating the numbers in there as we have it. So you have the votes. We'll finish off the votes and put the numbers in. Great. Thank you. Uh, for the board, participation in uh, pursuing opioid, opioid litigation. Larry, you were not here. Janelle, you were not here. Um, John Giorgio was before us last week. If you would, watch the tape. And, uh, and or call John Giorgio and ask him your questions on that. I'm going to bring it back for a vote next week. Okay, okay. good. Um, we did not vote on it last week because there was only three of us and I was um, not in favor of it. Okay. So if you could watch last week's tape on that part or call John or both. I appreciate that. I, have some, I do have some questions. I'll or, bring or it or back. Or concerns, I guess, yeah. would be better. Um, yeah. Chris, do you have anything to add on that? On the opioids, you're going to bring it back next week? I think that makes sense. Town Administrator's Report. Well, I was going to cover a whole bunch, but in light of the uh, <laughs> in light of the hour, I, I may try to uh, kind of just uh, go a little bit quicker. Just on the uh, wastewater update, can you just um, do the slide on the Harwich one? For we had the meeting with uh, DHY. Just go ahead. This is just, uh, we had several state and local officials there. We do have this, I think, on our uh, website so if people want to look. And the one point I just wanted to make, if you could stop there at the uh, R ours. Now, uh, just go back to, um, on this one, the town of Harwich. We did kind of talk about what we've done. And one of the things I just wanted to point out, you know, the discussion about $22 million, it's a lot. But, you know, one of the things that's in the uh, four-page pamphlet, if we have people do their own on-site uh, systems that only take out 20 to 40 percent, when you're looking at, and, and really this is, I just want to focus on the septic load reduction required, there's nothing that's in there that's below 40 percent. And when you do a wastewater treatment facility, then you can see that we can get up into the 95 to 99 percent range and there's nothing that we can't handle by processing the materials. You would see that Pleasant Bay is at 65 percent. So with Muddy Creek, that project, the, the um, alternative technology, and then sewers, we're able to get to that 65 percent. Cold Brook is another area that we're looking at that affects Sackatucket Harbor. So that's an area where we have the opportunity to do cold brook work and to do sewers and get to the number that we need to be. So I, I just kind of wanted to focus on that for, for just a minute. I, I thought that was an important piece that I was going to say the other night, but we had a lot, of, uh, a lot of material to cover in a fairly short amount of time. I was just going to add to that point. Another way to look at that is, is we're suing X number of houses to get to say, 65 percent yeah if uh if we did it with the alternative say nitrogen reduction because it takes out less nitrogen we'd probably have to do that with double the number of houses we'd have to pay an extra fee so you pull a lot more houses into uh, action by not taking these steps that we're talking about which would be greatly increased number of expense and as julie said you know we're, we're legally committed to do that right so the, the alternative solution is really not a viable alternative for folks because now their cost to do the home systems are going to significantly increase on top of having to potentially do the sewer. Chris, is that in the new brochure that we're creating? Uh, it's the not. percentages that I mentioned, no. It is in the 12-page uh, the one that we did before. That, that is pretty clearly in there. But I, I just, you know, as I sit through these meetings, I try to look for those points that people could kind of resonate with. Well, if that's a point that you picked out to resonate, we ought to consider putting that in that brochure. On the four page. Right. Well, I think they'd understand that it greatly increases the number of houses that they're going to yeah. have to pay extra money for. So actually, just maybe stop here for a minute. Just in, in terms of, uh, so the, why are we doing this? Uh, uh, Harwich would be a small percentage. Uh, so you can see we're uh, 0.9 million gallons per day 
60% of the cost. So we see the flow going in and then the reuse is coming out. So we do need to have, uh, bring it back in a, a recharge uh, site. So that's where uh, having Dennis, obviously a neighbor, I thought their, their vote of support was great at that meeting. Yarmouth did subsequently vote unanimously, I was told, uh, to support it. So I think that there is some energy in terms of uh, trying to have this move forward. Go ahead. Just keep going. Just keep going. That may be, uh, I think actually, I'm sorry, just up above the, uh, nope, stop on 14. Just why are we, why are we considering doing this uh, that we really save, I think in Harwich's case, about 19% on construction costs. The O&M cost is also a uh, similar percentage. Uh, we would restore water bodies and overall aesthetics to the Cape. I think once we lose or potentially lose that of people having too many closures because of uh, ponds, because of the high uh, bacteria rates that are driven by the nitrogen and phosphorus, we're, we're going to have a significant issue. And then just the recharge uh, issue, we do that will be beneficial for the location. I think that's good. When, can we go to the uh, Cold Brook one? So that is a uh, article on for town meeting to continue that discussion to allow for the, the three towns. I did have a uh, lengthy meeting on Friday trying to bring people together on the uh, Cold Brook uh, initiative. I think we are getting much closer. I, I, I think it was a, a pretty productive meeting. Uh, really what we're trying to do is, as I just indicated, where we're trying to take out a certain amount of nitrogen and phosphorus ponds do do that very effectively. I do have some literature that I would be happy to share with the board, which was actually a pretty understandable uh, element of the, the benefits of ponds versus some of the other mechanisms. So we are still in, uh, con in discussion. The benefit for us, if we're able to not sewer 240 uh, homes, that would be about a $6 million that we would save at a cost of 2 million. So we have a, a net benefit of $4 million for the community if we're able to realize this. It is a little bit of a challenge because it's not our property. So we're, we are working uh, with the Harwich Conservation Trust and I think in a very constructive way, but we are going a little bit more slowly and methodically. Uh, I would have liked to see more progress, but we are making progress is the, the key point to that. Chris, what's CDM's involvement on a financial uh in, the only in the thing that they, um, we have a contract with them, I'm trying to remember the amount, I want to say $30,000. They're providing the consultants to uh, assist in going through uh, the impact of how big a pond needs to be to realize the, the value. Actually, you know, there is one slide I'd like to show on this. If you can go up a little bit. It has several arrows with it. Right there, this one. What this shows is that um, this is uh, Bank Street is on your far left, Coit Road is on the, uh, the bottom, that we want the ponds, right, where you see that cell four and cell five. And the reason for that is you look at the 40%, 19%, and 20%. So almost 80% of the water that has the nitrogen is coming in at that cell four and five. So we're trying to strategically intercept the nitrogen a lot of homes to the north of that, which I think kind of drives uh, that issue in particular. So a lot of uh, septic systems, but uh, so th that's why it's kind of um, we're trying to find a, a balance of how do we intercept the nitrogen and phosphorus uh, while letting the natural environment stay. So Chris, this is this is a project that um, Harwich Conservation Trust is leading more or less. Yes. Our consultants are involved to help the town's position. Yes, it, it's Harwich Conservation property and their goal is to try to restore the site to a more natural state as opposed to cranberry bog. They are willing to entertain and they have been willing to entertain and we've had discussions about can we restore the environment and also do it in a way in which we decrease nitrogen to help ourselves. So actually one thing that came out of the, uh, the most recent discussion uh, it's something that I actually pointed them to. And the more I learn about this stuff, the more effective I think I'm becoming. Uh, we have saltwater marsh. Saltwater marsh is actually fairly effective at taking out nitrogen and phosphorus too. So one of the plans is to, to try to develop the saltwater marsh in that area a little bit more effectively. 
Can you send the board just a breakdown on that budget on that thirty-five thousand dollar grant? Yeah. Just kind of. I think what it's we're, thirty, but I, I will send that to. Uh, if I Larry. may, I, I thought I sent it before. I will send it again. Yeah, just kind of where we're at is what I want to know. How much negotiating? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Larry. Yeah, I just wanted to expand on that request because I've forgotten. I know uh, the town appropriated money uh, two years ago, Warren Articles, to uh, spend on Cold Brook. Could you, could you remind us what that budget about it was? It was $2 million, was. and the only thing that's been spent out of it so far is the so 30, that's 30 or 35. That's it. That. Yeah. And uh, we have, you've asked for CDM uh, money. Uh, I'm interested, is concert, uh, conservation, uh, how, how is Conservation Trust, are they, have they also expended money on this project, or is it just They're spending they their uh, separate money. They receive grants from could, could you uh, give different that state the, agencies. Uh, if you have that available, could we get that as well? It's not. It's not the town. It's Harwich Conservation Trust and their but budget. It, but we're combined. I'm just trying to get what the overall. We could ask Michael. Michael we can ask. He's willing he, to he doesn't have to provide. He it doesn't have to provide. It's, it. it's not. It's not something that we would provide. Rumor from the crowd is it's around forty thousand. Okay. The. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, crowd. <Greg. laughs> it was a grant that funded it. Okay. Okay. Uh, one just final. Like one final. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. Because I'm not, it's all financial stuff. I have yep, a, go ahead. The uh, slide where you show the uh, three alternative designs. Yes. Um, does one of these match the uh, MEP proposal in terms of 50% uh, itineration, that that you mentioned that would take out six million? And does it, do we, and then do the I others? I don't know if that um, original that? design in that was matched up to this. Uh, the goal, I guess, of my goal, my goal of my taking out fifty is, something percent is the target, right? And so I was wondering which one can have they decide which one of these designs gets us closest to that? Ours does. And which one is that? It's um, it actually says on the bottom. I think it's the one that is the combination. Can maybe you can s go to that slide? I think it's the last one. These here. are the three. Uh, uh, it's, it's the I've one got that has the one, two, and, and three. Green. It, it's the three good-sized ponds, up and sell, four and five. Okay, so it's option three. I believe it's option three. In this diagram. Can you fast forward that? And so that's the one that you're, you're hoping to get to. That's the one we're hoping to get to. That's, that's correct. And they did have ponds in the past. We did show that through ground penetrating radar. So we're not really asking for anything that different. We, it does go back natural that right there were there. ponds there at one point. So do we, uh, yeah, this is one, uh, well, I, keep I got it on this. I'm okay on that. Okay. And so we need to, as much as possible, stick to that position with our money then. That's, that you're saying. that's the idea. That's what and I need, I need scientists to tell me what these numbers do. I, there's no way I yeah. can get into that much okay. biology. Just uh, the other ones, and I'm going to kind of cook through these. Thank you, Jamie. All set. On the uh, CDM Smith brochure, uh, I have copies of that, so we'll bring that for the meeting tomorrow morning. I think he forwarded that to you for yeah, comment. I think the one that you have, the one that's in the top. Sharon Fleener, Wastewater Support, uh, Support Committee. Uh, Chairman. The one that's in your packet that I saw is not the last one that's out. I didn't think so. No, I've got, I've got it, I've got it here. It's similar, but there was, there is some differences. Okay. Um, he also sent out. I know Mike was copied, and maybe Larry, and I think Chris. There were three other drawings that went out on um, septic system diagrams. All right, and taking a look at this. Um, the picture here is, is the, uh, the, the house. We have a picture of the Chatham facility and um, the ponds again. And somebody had gotten back to me that wouldn't it be nice when, when you talk about that, and I I'd, I'd wanted the board to kind of take a position on this before tomorrow. Um, of those three diagrams that he sent out, might be better useful in this brochure than the picture of the house and the Chatham uh, plant and the ponds, which have been in brochures numerous times. So, um, so you're saying that the maps that he included, you'd rather see those on. All right, they're not actually maps. They're the ones that show the house, you know, with the septic system in the back and redoing it in the front or the side. Connection there's points. There's three of them. He just sent out. Like, in fact, he, he um, 
edited one and sent that out. I think I got it t today sometime. And they are actually on our website already. <laughs> I had Caleb put them on, so they're on there already. And I think when you look at those, when you look at the questions, um, I was at a meeting last Saturday with, with a group from East Harwich, and the questions that people are looking at are going back to these, to the homes and the connections. And I, I, I think if we're going to put out a brochure like this, instead of at, at least change the pictures, because so much of the wording is the same that has, was out in the, in the two that came out last year, um, and the pictures are the same. There's very little change to this other than the one picture of the map. So I think by adding those other diagrams, I think would give the, the people of the town uh, a better idea of, of what's going on. It would be something new information. But I, and and I, I don't know that you all have that, but I know Mike got them and I thought Larry got them. I thought we put it in the package, but. What? Yeah, the brochure was in the package. The, it was, it right, but he, but he changed that. That brochure has been updated. I, I would suggest, Mr. Chairman, that maybe they can go over it tomorrow and then I'll bring back a version and then the board would look at it right. next week. You know what, though? It, we keep saying this and it's going to get later and later and later and if we get this out too late, it's not going to mean anything. Larry, are you going to attend tomorrow's meeting? I'm going to attend tomorrow and, and I, uh, Sharon, I'm, I'm with Chris on this. I'd like to, your committee look at it again tomorrow. And we can do that. Uh, yeah, and we plan to. I don't think we need a position because when I look at the brochure, uh, you know, we've had several general brochures before it that gives a good description of, you know, why we're doing this, what's going on. I'm a little disappointed in this brochure because it's, it's basically that over again with some oh, minor yes. variations. Mm -hmm. and I think at this point, one month from town meeting, we need something that's directed specifically towards what we're asking at town meeting. Yeah. And this doesn't do that. Mm -mm. Uh, it, it repeats it. I'd like to have a look, and, and I think the, your committee can do that tomorrow and bring it back very mm -hmm. quickly. So I trust that you'll bring that back as well next Monday night. I'll we bring can it, vote on it. We can vote on it, and I'll be there, and, and I think it's a good look, and we can direct it more directly towards the uh, articles at this point. Yeah. I intend yeah. to be there tomorrow as well. All right. Good. All right. And so tomorrow's meeting is at what time? 8.30 in the morning. 8.30 here. here. Yeah, uh, yes, in this room. Okay. Thank you. Judah Eldridge. Judah Eldridge, I just uh, I had a request from um, the Finance Committee Chair that uh, can, is that, are we supplementing funds uh, by uh, taking, not funding it through taxation? And, and the answer to that was no, but I, I did receive that question. I just provided the answer back for the board. And then this was on the town administrative report, but I didn't know if you wanted to, yeah, the board wanted to read, um, more appropriate I think from the board to read, uh, Julian Sear, uh, Senator Sear had uh, got a vote from the legislature for uh, Jimmy Marceline. Yeah, I thought that was Maybe good. because of the hour, uh, save that for next week and yeah. maybe the board can just read it. Just acknowledge that it was done. We'll read it next week. So that's all right. And, and that concludes uh, my comments this evening. Okay. Chris, just um, briefly, just tell everybody what that was. That was the adjournment, and we'll read it next week. Yeah, okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, just, uh, I, I'm just going to read the cover letter. Uh, so it's, dear selectmen, I was proud to present, and this is from Julian Sear, uh, State Senator. It's proud to represent Mr. Marceline in the Massachusetts Senate, and I know that he was a close friend to many in Harwich. He was an extraordinary person who made a substantial difference in the lives of many and served his country and community with distinction. Today, the Massachusetts Senate adopted in, in memory of Jimmy and closed with a copy of the order. Uh, I thought you would like a copy. I send my best intentions and thoughts to his children and whole family, and I have sent a copy of this adjournment order to his daughters, and this was dated March 12, 2018, and maybe at the next meeting you guys can come read, to read it. Maybe we can get it on the website as well. We will. Thank you. Selectman's report. Larry. Uh, I just have a couple uh, uh, carols left, but I've seen her report. Uh, She's researching the uh, revenues in the, uh, on the uh, Pratt Cemetery and Crematorium. I, I'd, I'd be interested in what she found on that. I think the board would be, because that's been a big discussion in town. Yeah, actually, they passed it out at the uh, Finance yeah. Committee. Maybe when she could come next week? Yeah, yeah, we'll try to have Robin come next week and Carol. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be an interesting report. And, and just one other comment, Chris, and, and uh, 
but not in a negative way at all, but we have a, a sessions report, for instance, that comes in which gives just a number. On some of those reports, if they could, um, if anything exciting happens, report that. Uh, you know, it's just a number, but you know, is, are there issues? I think as a board from all these reports, it'd be good if, uh, if something happens that we should, should be brought to our attention that, that, hap that that's reported. Okay. That's Thank you. Julie? I don't have anything. Janelle? Um, I'd like to recognize everybody who went out to Harding's Beach today in um, honor of the Coomber family. I was unable to go, but there was a um, April Fool's plunge. plunge in the snowy waters at Harding's Beach, <laughs> and I'm sure it was very well attended. I haven't heard from anybody, but uh, recognize Justin Tavano, who is a Harwich uh, native and current resident who organized it. Thank you, Janelle. Mm -hmm. Don? Just, uh, to echo that it was a touching gesture on the part of uh, Senator Sear to do that. And I would love to see over the next the course of the next year some physical asset like <laughs> the tech school or some major building uh, have his name associated with it. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, All right. Motion to adjourn. So no. big enough.